Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry, this is like such a lively crowd. I feel bad banging that gavel and interrupting everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Welcome to the February 3rd, 2020 Hingham School Committee meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Please note the meeting is being recorded and televised by Harbor Media. If there's anyone in the um, room who intends to audio or video record this meeting tonight, could you just please let me know? All right, thank you, seeing none. Um, just a quick note before we move into the agenda. Tonight, it's a two-parter. We have our regular business <laughs> school committee meeting, and then in the middle of it, at 7.30, we will break for a public hearing on the fiscal year 21 operating budget. So um, after we approve minutes, we'll do a few of our normal business agenda items, and then at 7.30, we'll call to order the public hearing, and then anyone who's here for the public hearing can make comments on the budget at that time. All right. Um, so I'm going to move on to item number two, approval of minutes. We have several minutes to approve. Does anyone want to make a motion, Carlos? I move that we approve the minutes of the school committee meeting um, held on December 11, 2019. Um, uh, I mean, this is not a, actually a school committee. This was a, a meeting at the, at the Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority uh, to discuss MSBA. Do you have a second? Thank you. Any questions on those? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Approved. I move that we approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on January 6, 2020. Second. Second. Thanks, Liza. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I move that we approve the minutes of the school committee meeting, the school committee budget meeting held on January 9, 2020. Thanks, Liza. Any discussion? Ed? When I read these minutes, I frankly forgot what DECA, D-E-C-A, meant. So I looked it up on Google, and um, it's an entrepreneurship uh, enterprise. But it, believe it or not, Google did not tell me what D-E-C-A stands for. So I asked, what does D-E-C-A stand for? So maybe we could just. It's kind of mind boggling that you can't find what it actually stands for. I'm embarrassed to admit, I swear, I thought this had come up before and we. High school entrepreneurship. I That's what I was going to say. I, this is all coming back to me. Give, I'm going to put that on. Jamie's going to look into that. I, I was quite sure we came up with the acronym, what it stood for, a couple weeks ago. Um, and if Jamie comes up with it, we will insert it into the minutes. <laughs> Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. At 2.4? Finally, um, <laughs> I'll move that we approve the minutes of the school committee budget meeting held on January 16, 2020. I'll second that as well. Thank you. Any comments, questions on those? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, DECA, founded in 1946, stands for the Distributed Education Clubs of America, DECA. Thank you. To improve educational career opportunities in marketing, management, and entre entrepreneurship for students. Thank you. That will be on the final exam, everyone, so write that down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, questions and comments. Um, this is item three on the agenda. The Hingham School Committee encourages community engagement and we welcome questions and comments as agenda items are discussed during our meetings. Um, we do also offer time during public comment for items that are not on the agenda. If anyone is here tonight to, um, with any questions or comments for the committee that are not already on the agenda, if you let me know. All right, seeing none, we will move to superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Quickly, uh, some of the things so that you can continue on with your business tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about the um, new school, uh, new superintendent induction program. I think you know I've been uh, continuing my my work on that, making a lot of progress and finishing the report. Um, that said, it's it's not likely, and I've spoken to the chair about this. 
um, that that'll be ready for the 24th, given that we have a holiday coming and, and, and a vacation week in the middle. Uh, and so what we propose to do during the 24th, which is when I was going to give that report, is to really give you a pretty thorough update of, of my uh, progression on goals this year, which we really need to do a, a mid-year review anyway. So that will give us some time for me to give you uh, uh, impressions of where I believe I am in the goals and allow for any questions you have or feedback that you might have for me uh, in my progress to date. But we are continuing to work um, on the um, document for the entry plan um, report. Um, there's a, a lot of data uh, and we want to make sure that that's absolutely right uh, and correct and accurate as we really do plan because that becomes the important document about planning for the future and I want to make sure it's, it's, it's completely ready to go before without rushing that. Um, so that's where I'm at with that right now and I thank you for your patience. Um, the next part I'll have is um, if we can, I'll just say before I go into the facility forecasting meeting, uh, I think that uh, Mr. Ferris is going to get that. I don't have it in my packet right here. Um, but the December and January facilities report is in your, in your packet. I don't think we need to go through that night now. But obviously our, our facilities um, group is really busy uh, maintaining our buildings and, and much appreciated. Now we can go over the, uh, I believe that you have in your, uh, in your packet the uh, five-year forecast um, for, the, um, for the town of Hingham. Uh, and just recently, uh, Michelle Ayer and I attended the uh, forecast meeting uh, with the town. Uh, at this point, um, I think the, the, the first thing, if you're looking at your document on, on what you have, that first page at the bottom, um, when we put all the numbers together, when the town thinks about the, the amount of revenue they have coming in, um, accounting for the budgets that we've requested, and just so that you're all aware that the budget that the town has put a placeholder in for the school department is a 6.15% increase, um, which is the original budget that I uh, submitted. Uh, and with that, right now, there is an excess or shortfall of 1,707,094 that the town has to be concerned about, obviously, and, and figure out how to, to make up. Um, so um, those are the numbers we have right now. It's a work in progress, and it continues. Um, and Michelle, do you want to add anything to that or just of what we heard that day? Um, yes, um, Carlos also attended the meeting. So oh, it that's was. That's right, Carla. I'm yep. sorry, Carlos. Um, and John was there on behalf of the schools. And then it was um, Karen Johnson was there from the Board of Select. Um, and then um, Bob Curley and Victor Baltero from ADCOM were there. Um, and then uh, the town, town administrator, um, assistant town administrator, and Sue Nickerson were there. Um, so we, you know, went through the forecast for the town, um, the um, placeholders that have been put in there for all the town budgets, including the school department at 6.15. Um, and just we had a conversation, it was a great conversation. We talked about other, you know, other ways to generate revenues. Um, we had a pretty good, good conversation about what we can do because obviously a $1.7 million shortfall is a big nut to have to fill in. Um, so, but there are obviously needs that the town has, um, all departments, including the school department. So we were talking about what different ways that we might come up with ideas that could um, <coughs> help fill in that shortfall. Um, but again, these are very preliminary numbers, so just, just but it was a good forecast meeting. Yeah. I think we continue. It's a work in progress, and we'll continue moving forward with it. John, do you want to add anything to that as well? Um, no, I would say the, the, you know, Michelle did say the preliminary numbers, but, you know, it, it different from previous years, the good thing is that our number or the school's department of 6.15 is in here, which is a sort of a, a change from the past. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I, think they, I think they honed in pretty well with insurance, and there's a lot of updates to this budget. It reflects the, um, the additional Chapter 70 funding that um, is reflected in the governor's budget. Um, so uh, in, unlike in future years, we had some other things that may have been out there that could create some big chunks of, of revenue for the town. And um, based on the conversation, I didn't get a feeling that there's a whole bunch of other stuff that might um, surprise us on the upside, although, you know, there, there could be some things. So. Good, that's it. That's it for your report. Good. All right. Um, communications, you, any from the superintendent since we got this? Yeah, I, I um, thank you. I, I want to say over the last few days, um, 
I would say some of the administrators and I have received numerous emails um, with re concerns regarding our health policy, um, particularly I think in the um, nervousness that is uh, truly warranted with um, the global um, coronavirus, uh, that people are concerned about um, what the school district is doing to protect students. I want to be very clear, and I, I wrote a letter today, I think all of you have a copy of that, that went out to principals, I think principals sent that out to families. Um, I have been in, in contact with the Department of uh, Health for Hingham, um, who is in, and the Hingham Department of Health is in contact daily with the Massachusetts Department of Health. We are following CDC guidelines, we are following all the uh, projections that they recommend we follow, um, and we will continue to do that and we will continue to be vigilant. Um, in this regard. I would also say, and this is a reminder to us all, we are in the middle of influenza season, the seasonal influenza season. And we all need to be very uh, vigilant with that. And if you look at the statistics, we talk about the coronavirus and that's a serious issue, but 10,000 people die per year of influenza. And we need to be very clear that in our schools we expect hand washing and cleanliness the best of our ability and we are taking those precautions to ensure the safety of every student. Um, so I thank the parents for their vigilance in contacting us, um, but we are doing everything we can do um, that uh, we are recommended to do by the CDC. Uh, and uh, if anything changes, I will certainly uh, update people as that happens. Thank you. On January 15th, the wrestling team honored those who have served our country while winning a hard match against Silver Lake. The boys and girls basketball teams had a doubleheader on January 17th to raise money for cancer research. The girls track and field team took second place at the Division III state relays. Well, for the boys team, the high jumpers Warsha, Bromley, and Fennelly, and sprinters Najar, Shetzline, Diedrich, and Hesselman made Hingham High School records. After the mid-year exams and a nice long weekend for some, a veteran, Kevin Flake, spoke to all grades. He shared that an experience is worth an, an experience is worth nothing unless you share it. Devin Kushner and Aiden Murphy were accepted into the Massachusetts Music Educators Association All State Music Festival. And this past weekend, the Model UN Club took a trip to Harvard for a conference, meeting kids from all over the world along with familiar faces such as Abby Fennelly, who attends Harvard, and they were able to help create opinions and a brighter future for our country. And lastly today, all junior history classes attended the Thurgood performance, learning about the pillar of the Civil Rights Revolution thanks to the PTO funding. Thanks very much, Emma. Appreciate it. Um, other communications? I would just note that we, the school committee has received a number of communications from parents and um, other citizens in the town who are um, asking us to, in their support of fully funding the school budget that's being proposed and um, advocating for different positions, um, fine arts director, uh, director of special education services, so various things. So we really appreciate everyone's engagement and everyone's thoughts on these matters um, as we continue to work through the budget. Um, and again, we'll have more of that when we're um, working through the school, I'm sorry, the public hearing on the operating budget. And we are trying um, to reach reply to each email that we get. If for any reason we have missed replying to you, we apologize, but we'll flip through them. Um, but hopefully people are getting our reply. Um, all right, it's not quite 7.30 yet, so let's just keep moving through the agenda um, until we get to 7.30, then we'll flip back over to the um, public hearing. All right, so under new business 7.1 is to discuss a proposed draft of the annual report. Do you want to? Yeah, um, just just quickly on that. We, we had received from the town and in each year they, um, they have many pieces of an annual report that's part of the school, school, school systems. Um, the initial uh, report they had requested for February 21st, which we know that the next school committee meeting is actually after that date. Um, and then, um, so we began working on the report. 
Uh, in fact, I, I think, uh, Michelle, you know it's in the Google Docs, and I've mm -hmm. done part of what you and I would generally say. Um, however, we have asked the, the town for a, a sl <coughs> just a, a small extension um, so that we can consider that again on the 24th. Um, so we do have that time so that you can review it in full at that time. So we are progressing. That's all I'll say for now. We're, we're progressing, and we'll have it for you on the 24th um, for, for your signatures and review. Yep. Thank you. Any questions on that? Um, well, 7.2 is to do the program of studies, but I don't think you can probably do that in 10 minutes. Mm. So. I don't know. That's <laughs> up to. Could. He probably could if he. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you want to. And if we need to interrupt, is that okay? If we do. Um, do yeah, let's do. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm guessing program of studies might be a few more minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to skip over to 7.3 um, to discuss a proposed new policy 6.5.1, administering medicines to children. And this is a first read. Do you want to read? Yep. Thanks. Um, so the, the nursing department had requested a policy that would allow for the administration of Narcan if necessary. Um, unfortunately, that's the world we're living in right now. Um, so we dis we were discussing that, and the nurses had gotten us a, um, some language um, that was proposed for it, and we also, also sent some documents on the regulations and the EpiPen um, procedures that are going on there. And as we were reviewing all the regulations, it turned out that we are supposed to have a policy on the administration of medicines to students, and you're supposed to um, uh, re-up it every two years, and we don't. <laughs> so so what we did is we took the the MASC proposed sample policy and kind of rolled in the Narcan language to it. So mm -hmm. hopefully this will uh, a allow us to um, have our nurses um, administer Narcan if they need to, and then it'll get us up to date with the policy. So that's mm -hmm. in the packet. Okay. And it's the first read. Thank you. <coughs> Did anybody have any questions <coughs> on the new policy or comments, suggestions? I have one quick comment mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the Narcan part. It's, this is just like a writing thing. Mm -hmm. um, in the second paragraph, it starts with, it is the policy of the Hingham Public Schools that all schools shall provide. I don't think we need that phrase. It is the policy of the Hingham Public Schools that it can just start with all schools shall provide because this is the policy. Okay. So we just don't need those first That's couple fine. of words, but otherwise um, it all sounded good to me. As a parent of a child who had an <laughs> EpiPen, it made sense. So. All right. And I like that the Narcan is for the high school and the yeah. middle school focus. Um, I think that's a good compromise of worrying about if you have Narcan and the public is in the building and then how do you get access, but it'd be more high school and middle school where the need would be. So I, I appreciate that. I'll be there. All right. If I can say a comment about the EpiPens, we are um, as we've worked on the EpiPens and potentially having a stock of those, and I think I've worked with the nurses uh, since our, our last meeting, one of the items that we're running, our problem we're running into, is that we have a company that supplies us a very small supply of stock, which isn't enough for us to have for our full stock. We're running into an issue because um, pharmacies in Massachusetts will not sell us uh, EpiPens. Um, and so that could become an issue. I know that that question has been raised before. We would like to, to stock EpiPens potentially uh, and then uh, allow, you know, to parents to take those other homes. We don't have to, we have lots of them in, in other places. We are having some difficulty with that and I just want to update because people have asked that question before. Um, but so we're, we're trying to work through that and to see if there's any other way for us to be able to do that in the future. Are you doing both doses of the EpiPen? We have we have a junior and a and an adult. Yes, yeah. No, so you, are you aware uh, that whether uh, our school resource officer already is? I mean, it's capable of uh, you know performing Narcan Narcan on, on an individual, right? Yes. And they have they have the material too, don't they? Right. They the last I checked, um, Carlos, is they did not have. They are able to do it, but they are not carrying it on their person. Um, that was the last time I checked. I don't know if that's changed since that time, but the, when I checked probably a month or so ago, they were not. 
think we want to but I, I suspect that will happen in the future because you'd think that that's something that would follow them as well meeting all right great thank you um, uh, 7.4 to review an amended agreement for South Shore collaborative educational collaborative to admit Whitman Hanson Regional School District and act as appropriate to you you have that language in your uh, yep so does in your package see that in their package so um, all the school committees who are currently members of the South Shore Collaborative have to vote to admit Whitman Hanson Regional School District as new <coughs> members to the Collaborative. Um, so that is in the packet. It's a looks like a Gmail, I think, right? Um, does anyone I'll, want to make a motion? I'll move that we uh, approve the recommendation of the superintendent that the school, the Hingham School Committee um, uh, votes in favor of supporting the addition to uh, the Whitman Hanson Regional School to the um, South Shore Education Collaborative. Second, Carrie, thank you. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think you have to, did you read the actual language? The, the actual language just has to be voted on just so oh, we're, <coughs> you have yep. that in front I of see you? It. Yep. Oh, okay, do you have that? I don't uh, have yeah. it. Do you have it, Carrie, or do you want me to read it? I, I don't have that. I have it right in front of me here. I got it. Thank you. All right. Pursuant to Articles 8 and 9 of the col Collaborative Agreement of the South Shore Education Collaborative, the Board of Directors of the Collaborative has approved the following amendments to that agreement. The Whitman Hanson Regional School District, acting by and through its schools, its, its school committee, um, is hereby admitted as a member of the South Shore Educational Collabor Collaborative and the preamble of the co collaborative agreement shall be amended by adding Whitman Hansen to the list of members of the collaborative. Approved by the school committee of the town of Hangham on this day of 3rd of February of 2020. And signed by Chairman right. Michelle Ayer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Great, thank you. <coughs> all right, great, thank you. Welcome, Whitman and Hanson. Um, all right, we're gonna wait on the athletic report um, as well. Um, how about we got like a couple of minutes before the public hearing. Um, how about we do the field trips? To receive notification of the overnight field trip to the Hingham High School, of the Hingham High School Drama Club to New York City on April 3rd through April 5th. It is a tradition for the drama club. I have had the pleasure of attending it on multiple occasions myself. Um, it is a wonderful trip. Does anybody have any comments, thoughts, questions on it? What shows are they going to see? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. They always see good stuff. So. They always see good stuff. <laughs> I don't know yet, though. All right. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we do. We, I always, I'm sorry, I always forget if we vote on these. Or no, we, we don't have to vote. We're just getting new notifications. All right, um, and then we have. There's two other additional field trips. Uh, notification of the overnight field trip of Hingham High School students to Iceland, February 12th through February 19th, 2021. So that is next February break. I would guess on those dates. Um, does anyone have any comments or questions on that fabulous sounding trip? Mm -hmm. All right. Nope. And then to receive notification of the overnight field trip of Hingham High School students to Peru on April 15th through April 23rd, April vacation week of 2021. What a fabulous trip. Um, any questions on those? Okay. Great. Uh, okay, I'm going to read through. Um, we have a notification of appointments of food service technicians Brian Dean for Hingham Public Schools and Teresa Rotondo at Hingham Middle School and Jared Grimm, a parrot educator at Hingham Middle School. So um, congratulations to those appointments and to receive notifications of the resignations of special education teacher um, Maya Heggie and custodian Mark, Smith, Mark Mitchell, both of Hingham High School. Um, 
on a personal note, both of them will be very missed. Those are, um, you know, Maya was doing great work at the Hingham High School, and Mark Mitchell was one of the, he's a great custodian. So we wish them both well. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, just a quick note. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, Liza, they are seeing West Side Story, oh. Jagged Little Pill, and Mrs. Doubtfire um, in New York. <laughs> Those are the yes. shows. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And the other thing, just uh, while well, we have a few minutes before yep. your hearing begins, um, my office will be uh, chairing the search for the new human resources director. Oh. And um, we just worked out today the recruiting timeline and the structure of the interview team. And um, so we would like uh, the committee uh, to sort of self-nominate somebody who would like to be on that interview team with us um, for the preliminary round. As you know, the leadership team will review the applications. Uh, from there, we'll identify six to eight candidates to come in person for interviews. Okay. Um, and that's the team that will be made up of a gr uh, people from various constituencies who will help us determine those people who will move forward as semifinalists to meet with the central office administration. So. Um, probably under 48 hours just because that just came up today okay. and we won't see you again until the oh. posting is closed and so we right. do want to get the name of the person to be able to start the uh, coordinate the training um, and we're reaching out to our directors and our principals and assistant principals uh, tomorrow to recruit people to be a part of that team so um, I just wanted to put yeah. on your radar and maybe <coughs> give them to identify okay. somebody who might be want to be involved sure does anyone does anyone have a Carrie yeah yeah Carrie. Okay. 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 okay welcome aboard there you go Carrie. Okay. thank you all right, great, thank you. Um, all right, and that is perfect timing. Thank you. Um, all right, it is 7.29, so we're gonna go back to item six on our agenda, which is um, to open the public hearing on the fiscal year 21 operating budget. Uh, so it is just my clock says 7.30, so I will call to order the public hearing. Um, and I will turn it over to Dr. Austin to present the administration's proposed fiscal year 21 operating budget. Thank and then we will have much. time for questions, comments. Well, good evening again. And uh, so tonight's uh, PowerPoint is probably the shortest since we really want to take more time to make sure that people have the chance to, to speak tonight. Um, so I'm going to do a brief review of where we are right now uh, in the budget process itself. Uh, and so it's only six or seven slides, fairly fairly brief. Um, so the first one is, is a reminded everyone the the uh, mission and core beliefs that we have, which is the foundation of the budget, is the mission of the Hingham Public Schools, and it's to provide a challenging and comprehensive educational programs in a safe and supportive environment, enabling all students to develop the knowledge and skills necessary for success as local and global citizens. And our core beliefs are fulfillment of individual potential, respect for self and others civic responsibility, commitment to lifelong learning, and <coughs> service to others. So the Hingham Public Schools FY21 proposed budget was developed to address the following. One, and these are in order, the needs of the students. Two, the mission and vision of the school district. Three, the priorities set by the school committee. Four, the needs as determined by district and school administration and staff. And five, the needs and expectations of the community. So the base budget for FY20 and status quo FY21. To review where we are, the approved FY20 operating budget was 54319826 The status quo budget for <laughs> FY21, and what I mean by status quo, that includes salary steps for employees, a financial allowance for negotiation with all six units, <coughs> and our contractual obligations. So our status quo budget for FY21 would be $56,730,985. That's an increase for status quo of FY21 of $2,411,159 over FY20. Then the percent of the increase for FY21 at this point is 4.4% for status quo. <clears throat> In my proposed budget, the FY21 budget, the proposed, uh, as I said, the proposed budget for FY21 is $57,661,728. This is an increase over FY20 of $3,341,902, or 6.15%, and the increase over status quo is 930743 In the superintendent's proposed budget includes the status quo budget plus 
uh, administrative needs, which is our HR um, director, and uh, we're, as Jamie just mentioned, in hiring. That's 50000 to fund that fully. HTSS instructional needs, which is the Hingham Tiered System of Supports instructional needs, which is in the area of math, at the uh, cost of $456,338. Our professional development that goes with that is $18,000, and the uh, Hingham Tiered System of Support Technology requirements is $48,822. Regular education, that is the addition of um, <coughs> certain positions to support the general education system, is $145,668. And the uh, increase of uh, pre-K special education, $53,928, and then special education positions of 157,986 make up that 930,743. Next slide is, uh, and I know it's probably hard to look at back there, and I apologize, there's not much I can do about that on the slide, but the, um, the first in blue um, are the, um, the general education uh, budget uh, as it has been since the very beginning. Um, and then you see all the the articles within or the the areas in in that budget. Um, the uh, I need my pointer, and I'm sorry. There we go. So just to give you an idea, this area here. So the proposed budget for um, for general for total regular education is forty three million three hundred fifteen thousand two thirteen, which is an increase of two million two hundred eighty two thousand eight fifty three over FY twenty or a 5.56% increase. In special education, the proposed FY21 uh, budget is 14,174,390, which is an increase of 1,075,825, um, or 8.21%. And then finally, vocational technical is uh, 172, 175. Uh, 125 is proposed. That's actually a decrease of 16,000. Um, 777 or minus 8.88 percent. So what you see in that budget and, and what was presented to you tonight with this is basically what is in that 615 budget all inclusive in those areas. And this is the same as it's been now for a while. Just for your information, the, uh, the, the document that's up, up front, it sh uh, has $2,000 more than uh, the total amount there. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure if we got one of these where I didn't get the updated. Uh, is that with the, um, the t it's 250 oh, the, the, versus 9? It's where the, um, yeah, the, uh, the, um, Votech. Votech is off. Uh, yeah, so it's Votech, okay. the, the, the rates increase, so I, I changed the budget. Oh, and I didn't so get in that. That's what it is. Thank but you. The, the percent so was just the same, to, so. Thank you. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Thank you. So now, and the other things that I, I want to highlight today is that um, in the proposed FY20, we've, we put on things that we called highly critical needs, so I'm going to talk specifically tonight about those Tier 2 things that um, we recommended, but we're not included in the budget due to the, the um, what we, we considered financially um, difficult at this time. So the proposed budget for FY21, the way that I propose it is 615, is <coughs> 57661728 the increase over, as I've already said, over FY20 is 3,341,902 or 6.15. So these items we're considering on deck for FY22 and still up for consideration, obviously, in discussion at a later date, um, which would include additional regular education positions at 223, 249, special education positions at 112, 338, uh, athletics 6,608, and then which would have the highly critical needs total of 342,195. Within that, when I say regular education, that includes the fine arts director is in that, and then the special education director is in the special education um, side. So those are both there. And, and to, um, to illustrate the point that we talked about, the finance piece, if these were included, that 342,195 were included in the FY21 budget, the budget would go to 58 million three thousand nine hundred and twenty three dollars or six point seven eight percent increase so that's the that's the budget and that's um, for the most part what we've been talking about mostly uh, and and I certainly now that was uh, the overview and briefly um, to start your hearing 
and I would take any questions from, from you or anyone else that we have. Does anybody on the committee have any questions or Can comments? Just to go back one screen and leave it there, if you don't mind. Thank okay. you. Thank yeah. you. Does anybody on the committee want to have a comment or anyone from in the audience who is here um, to voice their questions or concerns or comments about the budget as proposed? Um, it is a lot of work to put this budget together, so we appreciate everything um, that John Ferris and his team have been doing to work on this and also to our um, advisory committee members who have um, been um, attending all these meetings and who have been offering, um, you know, giving us some questions and really good ideas to think about as we work through the budget process. We had a really um, productive meeting a couple of Sundays ago with the advisory committee members. Um, um, we've met with some CPAC folks um, chatting about it. Um, I know the staff and the department heads and the principals um, put a ton of work into putting forth um, what they their needs are um, and I think we can't put too fine a part point on it that these are all needs and not wants um, and we really just the committee really appreciates all the work that goes into putting this budget together so we want to thank you all for all you've done um, there are some really important initiatives on here that we feel are important to fund um, you know we we've been talking and um, at a couple of meetings that we've had and one of the things that comes up a lot is that I think people sometimes feel, well, I think everybody brings their own experience to schools today, right? Like, everybody is an expert. I went to school. Of course I know how a <laughs> school should be run. I went there. Um, but it's so different than when we were in school, right? I sort of liken it to, I feel like when we, um, and I'm of a certain age, but I feel like all around the same age, that when we were in school, it was all about just get those kids out of here. Just get them out of high school, right? Just get them through the system and, and push them through. But now the mission of the public schools, and this isn't just Hingham's mission, right? This is, if you go on the Department of Education, the mission of the public schools in the United States today is to prepare students for their future success. So it's not just they walk out of these doors and they're not our responsibility anymore. They aren't our responsibility anymore, but they were when they were here, and they and we need to prepare them for the future that they're going to have. Um, so, um, it's an inconvenient truth that that takes a lot of money to do, um, but we do understand that the town has the resources that it has. So, it's a very delicate balancing act of what we what the town has to provide for revenue versus what we need to spend. Whether it's the school department, the fire department police every every town department that needs more funds um, to get through so we don't profess to have any of the answers um, on the committee as to how we can fix that revenue problem um, but we do know that we've got expenses that we need to fund and we'll try to do it in the most financially responsible way that we can so well I want to go back to the quote uh, cited by Emma tonight an experience is worth nothing unless you share well let me share with you my experience uh, before I went for the school committee and joined this body, I was very passionate, uh, you know, and advocating for special ed, uh, for fine arts. As a matter of fact, you know, when uh, the directors came to do uh, present to us a couple of years ago uh, some of the programs on, on uh, fine arts, I said then that we ought to consider hiring a director of fine arts. So it's something that this body believes in. Uh, and the same goes for special ed. I mean, uh, we've been pushing for additional counselors, uh, teachers, and uh, yeah, fortunately, we have been able to fund some of them. Uh, and it, it is unfortunate that many times that we start talking about, you know, our pay student uh, mm -hmm. expenditure is, you know, on the bottom of uh, the 20th uh, town, benchmark, benchmark town. Uh, benchmark town that we you know share with uh, I think last year we were 19th out of 20 I think this year perhaps we are the 20th uh, so in a way I'll say shame on us for that um, but at the same time understanding that you know revenues uh, you know you only have so much money uh, to do the things and it's not that we <coughs> don't, don't want to do other stuff that we uh, envision 
so I want to say to the parents uh, that you know we got involved and wrote those letters of support. Know that you know, I for one, I'm very supportive of everything that you said, and I think I can sort of like speak to this body as well that we are very <coughs> supportive. Uh, it's just a matter of us coming up with uh, you know. Many times people may say that the school committee has nothing to do with revenue in town, that we are not the board of select me or the advisory. But let me say, I think we share a responsibility that we, sh we ought to come up with ideas of how can we actually bring uh, more revenue to the town. So Michelle and I, Dr. Austin and John, as we met with uh, you know, the elected officials and the appointed officials this week, um, I did say, last week, I did say that uh, you know, uh, Principal uh, Swanson and I, that we share something in common, we are really uh, pushing to have solar panel in our schools, uh, whether it's you know, uh, uh, you know, the field or <laughs> elsewhere. Um, citing examples of uh, towns like Marshfield and um, Marshby, I believe, they brought into their uh, town uh, revenues more close to a million dollars. So if you are to pursue that, that perhaps we'll have additional money to do the things <coughs> that we'd like to do. And uh, the town administrator heard us, and uh, who knows? So let's continue uh, pushing for solar uh, you know, power. Uh, panels and, and uh, you know bring some additional revenues. Just want to share that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Anyone else? We hear from the public. Yeah, no, I, I, and, uh, that's what I had said. I, at any time, if anybody wants to come up, just come up to the microphone. Um, give your name or, Be yeah, come on up. Um, share with your thoughts. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's what I told you. Can I stand behind the podium? Sure. sure. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Don't be threatened. I just forget that the, anybody's here. And Thank just you. your name, sorry, and your sure. address. Is this on? Yeah. It oh, actually okay. doesn't. Um, it's not, it's not for oh, 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 it's for the TV. Yeah. Okay. But pretend it's not a TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. My name is Holly Constant. I live at 34 Jarvis Avenue. Um, I've been a member of this community for 20 years. I am a parent of two Hingham Public Schools, um, the system. My daughter has graduated and is at university, and my son is still in the pipeline. So uh, I have some perspective of someone who went through and someone who's going through now. Um, what I'd like to talk about is the issue, um, and you alluded to it in terms of preparing our kids for success and the differences in the pressures that kids um, face today than when we went to school. I still hunt, uh, when I was in school, I hunted and pecked on a typewriter. We didn't have cell phones, we didn't have any of that, so I'm sort of old, but, so I have some perspective of the difference. But what I really want to talk about is mental health. Um, I specifically want to talk about mental, psychological, and social health of our kids. I feel that the kids are under so much pressure these days, and the margins are so razor thin on everything making a sports team, making a musical ensemble, getting into a college, being chosen for something. And the, the pressure is, is really great on them. I feel that there's a lot of anxiety, depression, um, and we're talking about Narcam in our schools. Um, so, and one of the things that I think is really important um, in terms of helping our kids to have a better mental health disposition are the arts. And the reason I feel that is because when the kids are in school, it's structured. You sit in your class, the teacher leads the classroom, you do this. You go to the athletic field, your coach says you do this. You, do, you go here, you do this. When you become involved in the arts, it's collaborative. Their, their phones are down. They're working with their hands. They're talking to each other. They're creating things. And I just feel that the ability to have the kids have an artistic outlet, if it's in wood shop, if it's in band, if it's drawing, if it's singing, if it's drama, I think it's really critical these days to help them <coughs> to have a moment to just decompress, to just relax from the stress and the structure of the world that we, that we put them under. And I'm as guilty as any parent, but um, I just think that the existence of the arts is really, really important. And I think it's also really important for those kids who are not academically inclined. It provides another avenue to succeed. It provides another avenue to showcase a talent that you may have that's kind of tucked in the back pocket. That if we don't have opportunities for our kids to think creatively and do something a little different, 
I think we're not really doing them justice. We're not really serving them. Math, reading, all that's important, no doubt. I don't, I don't argue that. But I just think that in the complex world of today, with the pressure that the kids are under, it's really important. Um, and that's the first point that I wanted to make. The second point that I wanted to make is that um, obviously, I, I'm here to support um, the arts in general, but I'm um, very specifically the Director of Fine and Performing Arts. One of the things, I'm, I'm kind of a geek, um, I read all your budget documents <laughs> before I came, and one of the things you have is your priority is implementing national and state standards, right, in the schools. Well, there are new national and state art standards. And my question is, there's no department head, there's no director, who's going to do that? not our resource teachers. They work during the day. They work at night. They work on Saturdays. They do all their own administrative stuff. They reserve rooms. They write checks. They do permit. Nobody helps them with that. I'm, I'm concerned that we're not leveraging what we already have in the system because we don't have someone who is spearheading it. How do, how do we know if we're meeting our standards? Who's going to be checking up? You know, who's going to be looking at when in an elementary school to be unnamed, the chorus kids have to sing in the hallway because they lost their room. You know, like that's that kind of stuff. We need someone who um, can check over all that for us and make sure that the opportunities are there for all the kids. If we have kids who maybe have skills or talents in something that we don't offer, maybe we should be offering it. And being creative, um, and how do we how do we how do we offer it? How do we do it? So, I think that um, between the mental health issues for the kids and the ability to drive that, um, I think it's really important that we fund a director of fine arts. Um, and it and it's and it's critical. Probably the only one in the school system who could do this job is Paul Austin, um, given his background and his skills. But we hired him to do a different job. I think we like to keep him in that job. Um, but we really need someone who can also support the resource teachers um, because as we have all these standards we have to implement how how do they know if they're meeting them who's helping them with content somebody might say well you're kind of heavy here maybe you should look over here there's no one to, to sort of uh, support them and to lead them and we have amazing fine and performing arts um, um, faculty but you know Everyone needs support. Everyone needs guidance. Everyone needs a professional person to bounce things off of. And without that in our school system, I just worry about that. So uh, my main concern is, is mental health and opportunities for kids who are not academically keen. Um, but my second is, I'm not sure that we're maximizing all that we have. And when you talk about um, looking within, we have a lot of resources that maybe we aren't utilizing. So. Everything is important. I understand that. I understand you have important decisions to make, but I think with the changing environment, with the changing pressures on kids, we have to switch our, our goggles a little bit and not just say, well, when we were kids, this is what we needed. Mm, that doesn't work. Our kids need different things nowadays. So um, I just ask you to please consider that. I know you have a lot of competing demands, but I think it's really important. Thank you very much. Come on up. Okay. Either one, whatever right. you're more comfortable Let's with. Just keep it going. Sure. Got <laughs> right. somewhere to put your hands. It's going to try some variety, oh, but yeah. <laughs> um, hi there. I'm Monica Tesler. I live at 246 Central Street, two houses down. Oh. Um, I have two children in the Hingham Public Schools: a boy in sixth grade and a boy in ninth grade. Um, I'd also like to speak in favor of the full funding of the Director of Fine Arts position. Um, and by way of background and context, my son Nathan, who's a freshman, has been in this, uh, the special education services here in Hingham since he was three years old. He's also very involved in the music program. He is the concert master, first chair clarinet of the concert band at the high school. Um, he's the one who tunes the band if you go to the performance. Um, so in particular, I wanted to mention and talk about how I believe the funding of the Director of Fine Arts position would really help one of our more vulnerable student populations, and that is the special education population. So I'll lay out to you an issue that we encountered um, just this past year when Nathan was entering high school. 
um, and that is he's on an I he had been on an IEP, um, and we found out that um, since he was going to be put into the strategies for learning class of freshman year of high school, um, which is one of the very basic special education accommodations, it's the directed study hall, that he would not be able to fully participate in the music program. Um, if you are in the strategies for learning class in ninth grade, it conflicts with the, um, I believe, gym requirement. Um, and then in tenth grade, if you are in the strategies for learning um, directed study, it conflicts with both gym and health. So it impacts um, students from fully participating in band, orchestra, or chorus. Um, I think this is a very unfortunate um, situation, especially for um, those students. Um, as Holly had mentioned, um, you know, music is known to have such a very positive mental health benefit. Um, it also has been well demonstrated to help students attend in class. Um, it's been demonstrated to help with sensory processing issues. That's certainly been the case for us. My son is also a very accomplished pianist. He's been playing since he was young. I attribute much of his advancement to music in his life. Um, and I think that the fact that um, students that are taking uh, the special education course, the fact that they cannot fully participate in these programs um, is, is extremely unfortunate. Um, in addition, um, let me collect my thoughts and look at my notes. Yeah. Yeah, it also actually, it's to echo what Holly had said about, um, you know, there, there's a lot of students that may not have academic success in a conventional um, academic uh, course, however, they're succeeding in music. So, you know, this is a huge blow to their self-esteem and confidence if they cannot even be a full participant in the band program or the orchestra program, for example. So, um, I think that um, the, the problem that we encountered is that there was no one spearheading how to resolve this issue. Um, and that's where I see the Director of Fine Arts really coming into play. Um, everyone in, that we spoke to was very much wanting to help and understanding the problem. And there were counselors, there were um, the band teachers, you know, many people in the community wanting to address this for us. But no one really spearheading um, uh, and saying, yes, this is an issue um, and figuring out a solution to us. And in fact, there really, there really isn't a solution other than various waivers or um, in our case, what ended up happening is um, we made a difficult decision to agree to have Nathan step down to a 504 plan so that he could in fact stay fully involved in the band program. But that's a solution that's not clearly not available to every student or every family. Um, that was just our, um, uh, how we resolved it for us. But again, if I think that there was a director of fine arts, this brings into issues such as um, you know, the scheduling overall, how many music offerings there are in the different kinds of courses, and how to work with um, you know, the other parties involved to find a solution to allow um, um, students like my son and others in special education to fully participate in the music program. So, um, you know, I hope you consider that when you make your decisions. Thanks. Thank you. No, I think that the scheduling portion is a, um, a very, no, no, you can, no, you can sit down. I can, I'll just pontificate from up here. Um, <laughs> I, I think that is a very um, good aspect to consider when we're, when we're thinking about this position because I know that has been a, um, an issue at the high school for some time is the lack of blocks that you can take the music or whatnot so the scheduling blocks right and so children have to make very hard decisions I mean that is an incredibly hard decision to go from an IEP to a 504 and oh, sorry. no okay I just wanted to say on that scheduling issue kids have to choose between taking an AP course and yes. being involved in the arts and I don't think that at 15, 16, 17 years old they should have to choose that and that's a really big issue um, with the availability of arts um, and the scheduling. And that's that's on the other side, on, um, on the high achieving kids, yep. they have to decide, well, am I gonna take honors chem, uh, AP chem, or am I gonna stay in the band? Yes, right, that's, yep, that's what, that's I'm what sorry, I meant. No, 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 that's yeah, okay, sorry, no, that is, that's what that I was thinking. That happens every year. It, yes, it does, so there have been issues with that, and I think if you're, if you don't have someone overseeing that, it, that's how it can, those things can get lost. Tim, did sure. you, yep. Yeah. Come on, I insist. I insist. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand up at the fake mic. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm Tim Dempsey. I live at 88 Kilby, uh, and I have two special ed children within the system uh, at East Elementary and in the middle school. And uh, my middle schooler actually just had to drop his band and trombone to fit into a special ed reading group. So the struggle is real. But um, yeah, I want to. 
I'm tempted to get up here and speak out f for as director of special education, but I'm going to speak for everything. I want it all. all right. uh, and I think how we do that, I mean, I can tell you by going on the message boards and everything that I think there's been a very sort of disappointed reaction to the budget from the public, that it's seen as milk toast, that it's, you know, not... <coughs> It's not a courageous budget. And I think that, and that's not anyone in this room's fault. It's certainly not your fault, Dr. Austin. Uh, it's not an accusation. It's um, saying that because we are in a town that in order to get significant funding for anything, we're in the position of having to a budget overdrive, which we know won't pass. And um, yeah, so. I think we all read, I've hopefully everyone in the room read the editorial in the Hingham Anchor this week about how underfunded the public schools are and comparing us to not just the benchmark towns of the South Shore, but of all of the towns in the, the state of Massachusetts. And out of, what, 350 towns in Massachusetts, we are in not the top half of funding. And in terms of money that the town has, and we're certainly in the top half. Um, so I think, I guess my question is a larger, sort of take a couple steps back and it, we're never going to make an argument for an override with a negative argument about how underfunded we are and how many deficits our budget has. We need to spend the time creating a positive vision of what we are going to do with that money because I don't think there's anybody here who is a big fan of throwing money at problems if there's not a plan to go behind it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm asking the school committee and the administration and frankly the parents in the room about what are we going to do this year to create a positive vision of what we would do with the money if our schools were adequately funded? Because they're not. Mm -hmm. um, and if we were going to, if we could raise our funding to our benchmark towns level, not even to be a leader in the community or a leader in education, but just be a close follower, um, what would that look like and how are we going to communicate that vision to parents? And I know it's too late to do an override for this year, but mm -hmm. I think we need to get together and say it's unacceptable as a community that we have underfunded schools and it's unacceptable that we have a system where I don't know it's just it's all just so unacceptable that our schools are funded okay. this way that we need to put everything to a vote to make sure that I need to put it to a town vote to get my kids adequate services and I think we I'm maybe I'm trying to make us all into a little bit more of activists and a little bit less followers. But I'm just wondering what are people in this room going to be doing over the next year with while we're living with this milk toast budget that we're all stuck with. And it's a great budget. I'm not in <laughs> <laughs> don't be insulted. But what are we as a community going to do? Right. So and I guess specifically for administration school committee, how what are we going to communicate over the year to to the community about why this money is needed, not just the fact that they have it and we don't, but what services are our kids lacking? What holes in their education? How are we not helping them live to their full potential because we won't give them the money? Not because we don't have it, because we won't give it to them. Right. No, I so. think that's a great... Um, so I agree with you on majority of what you said. What I don't agree with you on is your statement that a budget override won't pass. I think I don't if, actually agree with that either. If <laughs> if <laughs> if <laughs> if we take the words that we've heard from selectmen in the past, oh, we're not proposing an override. Mm -hmm. If we take that as that's that's a, that's it. It's stopping there. Yeah, a budget override won't pass. Mm -hmm. But if we continue and we build the wave that you and many in this room and many on this board have been talking about of these are the things we need and this is why the community will get behind it. And I firmly believe an override will pass. And I believe that in the past couple of years, this board has been talking about the per pupil spend when we have been told, I don't want to hear that anymore, and we've kept talking about it. I will say that Paul's budget presentation that he worked with the entire leadership team on to come up with very specific items of if we could have more money, 
as opposed to just saying, we have the lowest per pupil spend, give us more mm -hmm. money. No, now we do have a list, and we're going to get even more detail when Paul shares his report with us of his review as coming in as superintendent. And we are now, we now have those specific facts of this is what we would spend it on if we had this much more money. So we would, now we're zeroing in on a dollar amount mm -hmm. and items and why they will benefit our students. So I'd say us on this side of the room are working on that list. Mm -hmm. We now need the other people in the community to keep writing those editorials in the Hingham Anchor, to keep coming to these meetings as you are today and speaking up to all the decision makers in town of, so that they understand that the community is willing to raise its taxes because it values what it's getting for its taxes. At the same time, acknowledging that it's not just school children and families in town that need more resources. We need a better senior center. Um, if we packaged an override for multiple things, I think it, it would probably pass. Um, but you guys have done a great job of every year we speak up more, and I think we are zeroing in on more specific items and why they benefit our kids, and that message will pass. So I encourage you to keep getting more people involved and, and get it a little more organized of you know, having a focus, um, but so I think we can get something to pass eventually. It probably won't be this year, but if we keep getting this message this year, they're going to know it's coming next year um, or the, the year after that um, <coughs> because it is necessary. Um, we need to keep up and we need, we need to do what we're required to do mm -hmm. too. Um, so, thank you awesome. for thank you, your words. I think it is, um, we're saying that, I mean, I think what happens and what people in the town need to start recognizing, right, that this town is attractive to a lot of families because the schools are great. And if the schools aren't so great, then families aren't, this isn't such an attractive place to live anymore, right? And that's a risk to every homeowner in this, in this town, right? If, if people don't feel that this is the district where they want their children to go. And I think, um, I think that, to your point, Tim, I think that it's it's a probably for definitely for Dr. Austin and also a little bit for Dr. Venice as well, sort of trying to build the parachute as you're falling out of the plane, right? Because I'm like, I'm putting together an entry plan because I'm identifying what I am working with John and Jamie about what are the things we need to fill in and with the department heads, but I'm also like, but I also have to build a budget this year, right? So if there was only, can we just stop for one year and just see what we need. Um, so it's, I think that's the, the challenge that everyone has been facing. Um, but definitely appreciate your comments. Um, Carrie? I, I just want to second that. And thank everyone for, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. And yeah. to, to Liza's point, it's really helpful to, to hear these stories to try to create the vision going forward. Because you're right, we need to, it needs to be clarified. And I think it's, get, it's going in that direction for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's because people have been speaking up and, and reaching out. And I think I can't speak for everyone in here. I, I fully support, I'd love to find all of this stuff in the and next the level up right. this yeah. year. And I mean, I think most of us, if not all of us, would, would agree with that. So we, we need to keep speaking up to all the decision makers in town and not just yeah. us, because we're, we're, we're with you. you know? yeah. and, 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 and with the- I understand I'm preaching to the choir with yeah. <laughs> know. Events, so. Yeah, and as far as the, uh, the arts, the fine arts director, I, absolutely. I mean, that's the original project-based learning, right? So it's, I mean, I, I think we should try to find a way to, to do it. So it's, it's interesting but I mean yeah, I, yeah. I'm yeah I'm with you <laughs> so. and I do think that the more we talk about it and the more people in town have these conversations over coffee on social media which I'm not a huge fan of but whatever but other people are so I you <laughs> do it the way you want but um, you know letters to the editor and whatnot because I think what we don't want is people feeling like we're competing like we are taking money away no we are not taking money away from other people right and I think that I think as people become more educated, I don't think there's anybody in town who doesn't want us to prepare our students for the future, right? I think it's just not understanding what that means today versus what it meant five years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I think the more we can educate people and, um, and get people behind what we're doing here, right? I mean, mm -hmm. kids are 
kids are vulnerable as well, right? And they need the protection of us. And, you know, folks, I mean, it's part of the social contract, right? That you, you pay it back, right? Your kids went through it. My kids, my kids are out of the system, right? That's, that's my experience. Or that's why I'm here, right? I'm like, I never expected to be on a school committee. Certainly didn't expect to be sitting in this chair. Um, and my kids are gone. But I did it because the schools were great to my kids. And um, who, by the way, are both um, studying for uh, bachelor's of fine arts um, in college so I definitely um, know the feeling about the fine arts director um, but it but you know it's just just the way to pay it back right and that's what I think everybody has to and I think this town is filled with great people who are very civic minded and very generous with their time and their talents and their finances so I think if we just keep getting that message out there we will see a sea change yes so Libby so uh I um, noticed that when, if we were to position ourselves within our benchmark towns in the mid range rather than at the bottom range, that would increase our budget by over $12 million. And I understand we're not asking for $12 million just for the sake of getting $12 million, but uh, we do have some very specific needs that are identified now. We need them now. And um, Paul has done a, an arduous job of rising, uh, having those that are, we can't live without rise to the top. But there are some that are very, very close seconds. And then there are some that he didn't even talk to tonight that are, that he's put at close thirds. And, um, the thirds amount to a million dollars right there. So it's, um, I think, critical that Hingham find a way to uh, fund all of these needs. And I'm going to be doing whatever I can to help make that happen and make a groundswell of support. You know. Thank you. Anyone else? audience wants to speak or on the committee? Oh, I'll speak again. You can. <laughs> it's a public <laughs> hearing. You're entitled. There's some <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, again, thank you to everyone who came out tonight um, in support of the, the full budget as well as the particular items on the budget. Um, it is, as we mentioned, a r really difficult process, um, but we're doing our best here, and um, we're going to continue doing our best um, um, to meet the needs of our students. And I do want to say that, um, you know, this staff and the faculty and the administrative team of this district does an amazing job with our students, um, given the resources that they are provided with. So I don't want to lose sight of that, but it is time to start relieving the pressure a little bit right because there's just too much going on and there's just too much pressure on everyone and um and it needs to take a take go down about 10 notches and i think um and throwing money at the problem is not it but i think we are really starting to have some important conversations about how the money will be used and what it will do to improve and enhance the students educational needs that we are required by law to provide to them so thank you um, so on that, thank you, Carlos. Why don't you invite them, Carlos? Why don't you go ahead? So we appreciate the parents coming, and just wanted to remind you that there's two. Um, well, there's another very important meeting coming up on the 11th. Um, that's jointly with uh, the board of uh, selectmen and advisory. So if you guys could attend and, and also speak, if if you wish, yeah. would be greatly appreciated. Uh, 7:30 p.m. Right. At February home. 11th in town hall. Um, yes. So that would be when the formal budget presentation is made to the board of selectmen and advisory committee. Uh, so we scheduled for 7:30. I'm not sure what time exactly are we scheduled for, but uh, I did talk to Tom here today, and we're going to try to do that. I think he was thinking 7:30. Okay. So I think that's also the time that Adcom does their meetings as well as 7:30. So I think that's what we're going to shoot for. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> yes. Want Paul to cover? Yes. So we, yes. Okay. So as part of this, we also need to determine what budget. level budget we want to present at the board of selectmen meeting and the adcom meeting on the 11th. Personally, I would like you to present 
more similar to what how you presented to the advisory committee at our Sunday meeting. Um, I don't know if you need to do the per pupil cost. They've heard that before. Maybe just address it. I don't know if you need this slide. But I think it would be very helpful for them to, to begin to hear the big picture and what you're, because that's what you're finding. Uh, and um, and they've been hearing, since they've been hearing from so many in the community, which is a good thing, I think it would be good for them to hear from you or in the school committee of um, even talking about the additional million that wasn't addressed tonight. Um, so I think that would be good for them to get the big picture and them understanding that the immediate cost and what's in the forecast is only a part of it, but to see that we've begun to itemize things that are of right. critical need. Yep. Okay. What, at what meeting or which meeting will the school committee be voting on, on the budget? So, well, tonight we have to decide what number, what percentage increase we want to bring to the February 11th meeting. And then we will attend the meeting and then we will find out what percentage we are approved for and then we will figure out how we will apply those the funds. 24th we would do a formal vote, right? Uh, yes, for on the 20 at the meeting on the 24th, 24th. Yes, but tonight we have to let we have yeah. to decide what we want to go to the board of selectmen and advisory committee with. It's like is it 6.15? Go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, the second um, which one is the one with the? Uh, uh, no, actually, hold on. I think that's the one I want. Yeah, I think that is. You don't want that one. Uh, well, believe me, I don't. I do. <laughs> so, yes, something we're going to do right now. Yes, we should do no, it now. Right let's now. go yes. to the last one. We can one discuss there. it now. Okay. Um, so yeah, leave it there. Thank you. Yeah. So Paul had so the forecast the town forecast includes the 6.15% um, budget increase, which is the 3.3 .3 million. Um, and that's not to say that so I guess I just want to make one thing clear. It's not to say that if we do the 6.15, any of those things that are on deck for 22 have to stay in 22. Like, right, so if we, if we get a 6.15% increase, then the committee still has to decide how we're going to spend that 6.15% increase. Um, I mean, some of it is, uh, the vast majority of it is contractual obligations, right? So 4.4% of it is what, um, but the, additional funds I think it's close to a million dollars is what we have to decide where are we spending that we could still vote more than 6.15 as our vote that we cast um, yeah. right you you could, yeah. yes yes I mean you could vote any you know you could vote any number that you yeah. wanted on February 24th right. right but you know in the past we've always tried to go to town hall in agreement with you know all of the parties and stuff and we know yeah. through the process that we're going to come down to a number Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we've done a lot of, um, um, you know, high-level uh, overviews, and while the selectmen haven't got it directly, the they've got it indirectly. We know that they've got it indirectly because the, the presentations are all up on the website, and so um, we had, you know, we, we did give it to advisory. So I think a lot of people out know the numbers. So, um, you know, I think in, in this joint meeting, the you know, with the 6.15 that's in the forecast right now, it's still a negative of $1.7 million. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of cutting to do, or, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of cutting to do, or, you know, in, in better language, retracting, you know, certain things. Um, you know, the, the, the thought of going t to them with a number higher than what we have in the budget right now, which I think is, um, you know, higher than uh, numbers that we've you know had in the past. I'm not sure what what it's going to do John, I'm not saying for us to say we're changing the number in the forecast I just I want I would like the Board of Selectmen to hear what's out there To mm -hmm. do the presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking to change oh, yeah. the number that's presented and I totally understand it's the odds of it being less of a total number 
fine. Mm -hmm. We can then decide how to allocate within that. We might decide to switch things out, move them from list to list. Um, but I do think it's important to do the presentation for them so that they can even ask questions because even though it's out there, they have a lot on their plate. I, I'm sure they've heard bits and pieces of this. I don't think they've heard the detail in the presentation. And as much as we've heard it five times, um, unfortunately they haven't. That's part of Great. communications and politics. you got to repeat the stump speech over and over again. Um, so. No, I hear that. I think yeah. that at a certain level, I mean, we certainly should give them the numbers. I'm not saying that we wouldn't get the numbers, but I think the focus for, from the superintendent really should be at that 6.15 level and say, hey, but we have these other tiers right. and these are really urgent needs for us. Yeah. But I wouldn't, I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm thinking that how much time do you want spent on those because it's a fairly quick conversation when we show them a big, you know, list of the other items on where, you know, other things that we should need. But I think we, we need to sort of go and support that 6.15 number yeah. as strongly as possible because yep. those really are bare bones. Yep. You know? Yep. Right. Okay. Well, then I want to say no. We need to hold their feet to the fire and go with the highly critical needs and put the 6.78 out there. I mean, that, you know, how long can we wait for all of these things? We, we, the, the, we need to put the pressure on. We're just sitting here, like, debating, negotiating with ourselves. No, I don't appreciate that. I want to make them negotiate with themselves and make them negotiate with the town and say, hey, look, town, we need these things. Right, Walk up. Which is true, but this year we know what the revenues are. It's, it's not like we can change. We, we know right now that if, if, if we got 6.15%, there is a $1.7 million shortfall. So we've already shortchanged ourselves. Yeah, because we've already presented, they've already taken the 6.15. Historically, they would put 2.5 on the forecast <laughs> and make us go back and fight for, right, 2%, sorry. 2%. And then, then we go back and they throw our number in once we gave them that presentation, and now the gap looks really big. And it looks like it's all due to the school department. So right. better, better to have the, the 6.15 in right now and let the community know that, hey, we're all in this together. The town and us combined, uh, you know, uh, creating that that deficit, you know, and we'll work together collectively to get out of it, I think. But and I, I, think, I think in fairness, too, I don't think we want to come across as we have been selfish, right? Because we do understand that there is a lot of seniors living on fixed incomes, and that is the argument of many elected officials that, uh, many are not being able to afford our taxes, as is, because of living on a fixed in income. Uh, and we do empathize with, that, with them on that. Uh, so I don't want them to think that we've been selfish. But at the same time, as Michelle and many said, uh, there is major needs. We need to educate our students. Uh, things changed. So it's a matter of really coming up with a better way of doing things. I agree with the, what Lib is saying. Uh, obviously, we want to be over aggressive, but at, some, at the same time, um, Liza mentioned your presentation, Dr. Austin, was awesome, right? If you repeat the presentation, and I would even recommend that you start with your criticals. Hey, listen, this is where we would like to be. But we understand we have uh, empathy to many that cannot afford any additional taxes and so on and so forth. Uh, so here it is something that's reasonable. Um, and the fact that it is already on the forecast at 6.15 uh, is great, right? It's not a done deal. Uh, I think we should start with the, the critical. This is where we want it to be. And, uh, you know, they are watching our um, you know, meeting tonight as well. And, you know, we appreciate the advisory uh, assistance of bringing, you know, things to the full advisory. Uh, and Board of Selectmen, so whatever we can do. So can I say, well, I'm sorry, just one other thing. So, I mean, the education process that's, that's been begun during this budget process, it can't just end at the end of this budget process, mm -hmm. right? This is going to have to go on for, mm -hmm. you know, an entire year yeah. and educate everybody, you know, the public and, and the public and the elected officials more and more about, hey, what are the needs and, you know, how do we compare and, you know, what do we really need? 
it, it's got to, you know, I mean, I mean, I think I'm sort of a longer range planner, so I'm saying, you know, we, we need to go forward here and we need to keep that education up, even though it's not the budget period. You yeah. know, we, I mean, we have like a six month or a four month, I mean, it seems like a year long, but um, I mean, we really, you know, we start having these conversations in earnest in December and, you know, they go till March and we'll finally get a number that we sort of hopefully all three groups, the advisory and selectmen and the school committee agree upon. And that's the number that will get presented and recommended to town hall, uh, town meeting, you know, uh, uh, for the, the, uh, the overall town meeting. But we can't stop there. That's, that's where some of the community needs to help and to continue to, continue to educate throughout the course of a year um, to explain to everybody how, you know, how it is, how these needs are. Um, you know, we get really, administration, we get wrapped up in all the things that we have to get caught up on after the budget period. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for us to keep on pushing those things. And in the back of our heads, we constantly know that, you know, hey, before we know, we're going to be in budget process again. And, um, you know, and, and lo and behold, here we are again. You know, but those messages have to continuously get out there. Right. Just to that point, though, I think what Liza was saying about start, Big picture and with that almost 12 percent increase okay. that you were talking about and moving back it maybe an abbreviated <coughs> part portion of that but I think it is important for them to hear because they are getting bits and pieces of it yeah, and, and really the message isn't we want more money because we're at the bottom of approval spending it's we want more money because we need these things mm -hmm. right and so uh, putting that out there and as much as possible will help us kind of educate throughout the year right um, I'm sort of with Libby about presenting it at 6.78 these are these are structural de deficits a lot of these things and I think it's important to put that out there even if we don't get it you know it's the only point I would offer into the conversation mm -hmm. is just to be um, reflective that any of the budget levels that you see here um, uh, sort of came from our typical process where we are preparing for the annual budget. So I, I don't want there to be misunderstanding that this is all of the need, right? right? This was the administrative team looking ahead to fiscal 21 and saying, what do I need? What, you're, what I'm hearing you ask us for, right, is a bigger vision and direction of where under Dr. Austin's leadership we would like to move as a district. Mm -hmm. I, th I just want to be clear that those are two different things. Yes. And so the day-to-day -day operations that we in our roles oversee um, are of paramount importance. And if I hope you all know by now, give me a microphone and I will talk to you all day long about our kids and what they need and how, to, how we can do it better with given the right supports and structures. I don't want to confuse that with getting a budget passed to open school in September mm -hmm. <laughs> as we're negotiating six contracts and uh, are welcoming a new superintendent in the fir his first year of practice with us. Mm -hmm. And so I think if there is to be a bigger conversation about truly right-sizing the district, I, would just, I don't want to see us jeopardize any of that <laughs> by not getting off at the right foot and in properly engaging our, our, our supportive selectmen and our advisories as cooperative partners as opposed to anybody we have to hold anything to a fire about mm -hmm. right I, I would hope that we see each other as mm -hmm. a one town um, who all have responsibilities for different aspects of that community but we are one community mm -hmm. it is when we become divided that we are most at risk for, for lack of success mm -hmm. and our kids are too important frankly to <coughs> risk have anything risk <laughs> um, what we can do to make sure that they have the best future possible and we set them up for success. So the only, and I'll be quiet now, that's the only point I wanted to offer into the conversation is just these numbers, even at the 12, 11 something percent is only reflective, right, of what we need for next year. It's not reflective of a bigger structural revisions and movements and, and, and changes and, and structural <coughs> moves that I think I'm hearing you ask us for in a bigger picture sense. Um, you know, shaking your head. So that work has no, started. Yeah, I appreciate. We've started, but I mean, even the eleven percent was based on a conversation around what do you need for next year, mm -hmm. not what could we really do with sort of a, an open brainstorming opportunity with all of our leadership team in one room, saying what, how truly do we redesign this <laughs> to right. be as responsive as possible? Mm -hmm. See what I'm getting at? Yeah. Two different conversations. Yeah. Well, I would. I would like you to make exactly that statement then, that 
this is just we're taking a peek in the door and mm. we will be coming back and we do want to keep this conversation going and we do have to plan for the future of yeah. Hingham. Um, I think that that's that's a great yes yeah, it's a perfect comment mm. and we have had some conversations with selectmen and advisory and the administration about having um, the conversation with people from mask and from the state like talking about the the longer range vision and whatnot and and to Jamie's point that's what I was going to comment also that I think one thing that we have to also appreciate is that the 6.15 percent is what the administration and the <coughs> department heads and principals have said that they need for next year mm -hmm. right there are some things I think that we would look to do in future years but we may not be ready to have those out here right now there may not be programs in place there may not be so I think that the 6.15 percent was what the administrative team came up with which what they could what they what they need for next year um, and I think we should be mindful of that as well that we don't want to put funds in place for programming that we you know what I mean like if we're not ready to put a program in place then we don't want to put it necessarily in the budget so something if I can just say something. yes I, I, I know we've talked about the presentation that I'll do um, but I've, I've heard first of all I, I think all the commentary is really important um, I will put out a presentation that they help them understand about the true needs of the district um, and no, and, and, and I think starting at the very big, that umbrella part, just as we did before with the ADCOM uh, meeting that we did, or the, the ACES committee, um, we'll do that again, and, and we'll talk about the, the things in the future that we absolutely need. We'll break that down to, you know, if it's 615, these are the things in 615 um, that the administrative team did sit and, and really kind of have that <coughs> heart to heart thought about, what is it we really need um, to move forward? You know, and, and I would agree, we really need all of it. There's no question about that. Um, but I think there's also a reality that we have to work in. And I do think that the, the, it is a bigger picture. It is a much bigger issue moving forward of how do we fix this for the long run. Um, I mean, we can continue to talk about why. And, and we've done an incredible deep dive into per-pupil spending. And we're still doing an incredible deep dive. That's one of the reasons why I'm not done yet, um, because we continue to dive in the finances so that I can be very clear with educating the community what this looks like. And then we have to work as partners with the other departments in town to figure out how do we really approach this in the future. Because I really believe in talking to all entities, people truly want to support the school system. People want the very best school system possible. People want to do all of these things that we put up there. I don't think that anybody knows quite how to do that with the, with the resources we have. That's going to take a lot of hard work. So I will present um, hopefully a, a, an equally impressive, hopefully, um, presentation for ADCOM and the select board um, with good information that's factual and talk about the needs of the district, but also take that down, and my recommendation is to say at 615, if that's what you're going to go with, these are the things in 615 that we've agreed to by consensus for the administrative team that are the most critical elements that we have. And, and with that, you will kindly highlight that the community are demanding. Of course. You know what I mean? So, yes, it is critical that, that it's true that the, your uh, team put that together, but at the request also of the overall community. Of course, yes. So it's okay. That's been absolutely part of that. I mean, it, it, part of these things that are in there because we've had communications with community and the thoughts and needs that's been there. I've been listening for seven or eight months about things that, that should be in the budget, and I think a lot of those things are reflected on the actual needs of the district. Thank you. Um, so you need a number to go in there for your presentation <laughs> on um, on the 11th. Um, so oh, we have a vote. It's just a consensus of what we what we want. I understand the issue that to, to give the big overall and then understanding it's a 615 and what's in 615. That's right. really the number you're, you're talking about, and I think I agree that the, the time to debate exactly what's in that 615, if that would be given, is another day. Right. Yes. 
So we're saying yes. I won't restate the obvious again. So I just want to address what Jean said because I absolutely 100% agree with you that we are a community when we all need to work together. And I, I take your point. And I know you know that. that, that absolutely. <laughs> Um, and I think that I just want to recap that there are several different layers that we're talking about. So the 6.15 is, you guys really did an awesome job figuring out for next year, but it doesn't even reach the tip of the iceberg. And the other um, things that you've listed on the list for the uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3, encapsulate the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. and that's why I was shaking my head when you were saying when you you went even beyond that mm -hmm. to you know total programmatic changes and whatever like I mean I'm just sitting here looking at the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. and then you were going beyond and I'm like oh that's mm -hmm. awesome so mm -hmm. what Michelle said is that that's a good point for you to make mm -hmm. again and again you know yeah. this all of them, one, two, and three, are just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we agree. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, we work with it every day, right? So we need the bigger vision, and then we need a, a plan on how we're going to get there. And it's going to be over a number of years, because nobody can possibly implement everything we may need in the course of a year. And, you know, that work is, we're doing a lot of that work now. It's not completed. No. Right. So we are starting to percolate a vision, but we need to yeah, know what we need to open the school on September 2nd <laughs> or whatever. I agree on the 11, yeah, the 11.62, trying to implement that whole vision in one year is just not possible. There's just not the bandwidth to get people up and running. Um, but the 6.15, it's like the most critical absolutely has to be put in place, but I would even say that the highly critical, the 6.78, those are also things that absolutely have to happen. I mean, there's, we've got a student body, over 4,000 kids. The law would require that we have a special education director. We don't have that. We're not fulfilling our responsibilities. We have all of these valuable uh, stories and letters that we've been receiving on the finance director, that is also a state need. That the, a state requirement that is ha coming down the pike that we don't have that filled, and that's something that needs to happen. Um, so I don't. I mean, I appreciate the six point one five, but I think if we're going to agree on anything, it's got to be the six point seven eight. And we haven't even talked about uh, the high school needing an, an additional assistant principal. Because obviously the number there is, is high, so I. But I think we need the only thing is, and I think that this is what the administration is asking us tonight. We're not tonight. We're not approving positions mm -hmm. in particular. We are approving a number, and so yeah, the six point one five. You could say, I well, instead of doing this, we want the six point one five. The funds from that to be used to fund whatever else is potentially that important. Well, that's I mean, there's really robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right. So we're really talking about a really small it is very, yes, money. It's and less than a million dollars. And these super critical things that are in that first tier, we, I, mean, yeah, I don't see what we move around. And I, I mean, I agree, yes. There's probably not a lot right. to move around. What we have done in the past is that we allowed the superintendent to go there uh, with his team recommendation, and then we will we'll meet after and we will vote on our own number. Is, isn't that true, Dr. Shire? So, so I think we, we you know, we allowed the Dr. Austin to go on um, and do his presentation. I think there is a consensus that he should actually highlight the the criti critical high, highly critical uh, needs, so people can uh, start on true understanding that you know we we need to move in that direction ASAP. So then on the 24th, I think we can then um, vote on a number that we are. And I will note there have been years when the advisory committee came down to making their final recommendation on the budget mm -hmm. that <coughs> there was extra money, mm -hmm. and I think we got another adjustment counselor 
something happened at that That's meeting right. where something came off of the second tier list and got put on or something else retirements or something happened and we shifted things around so yep. um, this is still we're still in the process right. this isn't the final stage and we do need to get the input from the board of selectmen and advisory because yep. there are advisory committee members who weren't at that Sunday meeting <clears throat> they may speak up and say yeah do this at that meeting I mean you know you never know what will happen so <laughs> I'm being <laughs> optimistic but I, I certainly have direction I think that I understand what you'd like to do and um, we'll present both 61 and 615 and make sure that they understand that what we really like to see is 678 I think we get the 615 those are most critical we'd really like to see the 678 and we explain that to them. <coughs> we'll do the best we can I think that's what we're going to do very good. All right. We will make you proud, we promise. <laughs> that's, that's a high taller. Go ahead. You already do. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, with that, I'm going to close the public hearing uh, or take a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. And resume. And resume um, a regular meeting. Second, Kay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, we are back into our <coughs> regular session, so the public hearing is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. All right. So, 7.2. Is that where I left That's off? Right. right. Thank you. Uh, that is to receive a draft of the proposed secondary program of studies for 2021. Um, I believe Rick, I don't know where Paul just went. <laughs> Can we proceed without him? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Mr. Swanson. Um, okay. So traditionally, he would send a memo uh, to my office outlining changes. I then would put it on my letterhead and send it to you from me, which <laughs> made very little sense. Uh, so I did. We did check in with Mr. Smith. Uh, there are no um, substantive changes to the middle school program of studies. That's why you don't see any memo from Principal Smith. But uh, Principal Swanson did articulate uh, all substantive changes that are being made to the program of studies for twenty. 20 and 2021 um, yes. and so he's here he's available should there be any questions from the committee right. everyone should have got a memo in the packet just yes. outline, and then also a copy of the actual program of studies thank you um, any questions from the committee on any of the changes in the program of studies or um, the, the changes are outlined in your memo. In, in uh, Prince and uh, Rick's memo. Yeah. Rick's memo. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Um, anything? I had. Go ahead, Carrie. I saw one about the AP courses, um, and it's, it says that students are enrolled, so they, they pay a fee. And um, if there's a, if there's financial hardship, then they can contact the AP coordinator or the director of counseling uh, for more information about the possibility of a fee reduction. Are we also reaching out if there's a student who would be a good fit for an AP class and there's a suspicion, is, is the counseling department reaching out to make sure that nobody's unable to take an AP class because they can't afford, afford the fee? I don't know if Rick has a question. Turn over to Rick. I don't know that we would do targeted, I mean, go ahead, Rick, sorry. Sorry. Can you come up? I'm sorry. Can you come up? <laughs> I guess yes. uh, to, to be more to be clearer about it how are we making sure that anyone that nobody's being denied <coughs> the opportunity to take an AP course because they can't afford the fee um, I don't know that there's that we've commu actively communicated about that policy I, I, I don't know that we've thought of that as a disincentive in, in the past mm -hmm. um, you know we, we have offered financial assistance uh, on AP exams for many years mm -hmm. and um, it has been the expectation for many years that students who take the AP courses are taking the exams at the end and the school has had um, resources available to, to provide that support. Okay. Um, I know I our counselors generally are in communication with students and families mm -hmm. uh, on an indivi individual basis to mm -hmm. communicate that availability of funds. Okay. I had sort of the same for some reason reaction when I saw that sentence too and it was more about that, that just the word that it said the possibility of a fee reduction and I was thinking is that like 
could it just be changed to say like no student will be denied at taking the AP because they can't afford the exam and please reach out if there's financial mm. if there's a financial need for that okay just a little tweak in the language that yeah would because the way I just read it I was like if I we're having financial hardship. I was like, oh, it's only a possibility I can get a fee reduction. It's not like guaranteed, so maybe I won't even bother. Right. So it is it, it is income dependent. Um, yep. mm -hmm. So similar to tuition breaks or if we were going to waive full day uh, kindergarten fees or preschool fees, um, there is an eligibility. Now, we do have, um, to Carrie's question, if the student was, say, eligible under free and reduced lunch or we already known to us in the system, mm -hmm. that would have been a part of the conversation with the counselor okay. when looking at course selection and looking at what they wanted to do. And no student would be um, uh, actively dissuaded or <coughs> sort of somehow redirected to a class that because yeah. of the money. Right. It's almost right, an afterthought absolutely. that it's, it's taken care of. And if there is a hardship, um, and I believe the, the counseling department during the nights, right? Talk to mm -hmm. family, and I could be wrong. I, I'm not there, but there, I, I believe there is a conversation during, um, like, the program study nights, right, where they sort of go over course selection and go over AP fees, and because it's not just um, AP fees, it could be athletic fees. Like, there's lots mm -hmm. of reasons why fees may be waived or reduced, and that it. So to your the point of the, of the wording, yep. is that um, it is dependent on income, right? So there is there 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 is a piece there that. Um, okay. Uh, now, granted, there is flexibility due to generous funding of, like, the Women's Club. Like, there's lots of places who will give us money to sort of support families, particularly on the holidays or the activities. But if you're looking for an actual waiver, is my understanding is that there's sort of the threshold mm -hmm. of eligibility for the family. So what if they just changed the last two words to financial aid? Would that work? So <coughs> for more information sure. about the possibility of financial aid. Sure. You know, would that make yeah. sense? Just yeah. Yep, I, I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments? Yep. Um, I was glad to see a new English senior seminar added. Um, and I also liked the chart for the science sequence of courses. And I wanted to request that we have that grid for all departments Ooh. of the sequence of courses. And on, because I, I I found it very beneficial to see it laid out, understand where your child, what direction you can go, up, down, around, and I know it, math was the first one that was redone and, and that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at the English, are the English electives of creative writing and journalism only available to seniors? English class to allow for us if we do need to absorb some of the student population that we have because of numbers coming. Um, so it would only be a senior le senior seminar, so it counts as an English class. Uh, the creative writing elective that we have right. in place right now is open to all students, but quite honestly, because of numbers, I'm not sure that we'll be able to run that. In journalism and speech and communications we haven't run in, the, in a number of years because of the um, enrollment in teaching staff. Okay. Well, then I would say that from a budget standpoint, then we're not being equitable of electives in the English department compared to the other departments because when I look at what's offered in the other departments, there are a lot of electives, particularly junior and senior year, and you can't take an extra English course as an elective right now with the staff that we have and the student population and I think that's a shame for the creative people we have and for being able to be good writers um, is important and I know is a passion for people and so uh, looking to the future I, and that's also putting those grids out there and being able to map it out to finding the equity of where we're offering courses. Um, I think that would be a good exercise 
to have and to something to consider for the budgets in the future of being able to offer those electives mm -hmm. in the English department. So, um, but you answered my question, so thank you. So let's get some more English teachers. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> we're gonna need, we can use them. Yeah. 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 What triggered the change on of um, foreign language to what language? Erica, would you have to? Um, that actually comes as a recommendation from the State Department of Education. Um, they're in the process of updating our um, frameworks, curriculum frameworks for world language. They're just at the beginning of the process, so it's going to be another year, year and a half before anything comes out. But the very first recommendation that they made is to change um, the titles from foreign language to world language, which a lot of districts in the state have already done, um, simply because they feel like foreign um, implies other, implies different, and has sort of a negative connotation, and the world is more positive. Thank you. I did notice that it's in the program of studies, it's world language at the top, but then in the narrative, it still says foreign language, I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, a quick yeah. The well. references. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, anything else? No. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, so that is moving on to 7.5, Correct. I think. All right, thank you for keeping me on track here. Um, all right, 7.5 is to hear a report from the athletic department and to discuss field improvements and act as appropriate. Um, I know Jim Quattroni is here. Hello, Jim. How are you? Um, do you want to just kick us off and let us know? Sounds good. What yeah. we're doing. Thank all you right. very much for your time, yeah, your time you. this evening. I'm here tonight to talk about some improvements um, and repair on uh, the softball, varsity softball and baseball fields at the high school. Uh, before I get too far into it, after listening to your public hearing, I do want to say that as I conclude, Mr. Ferris is going to have a, an interesting way to consider funding this. I feel like I, that wasn't part of the order on how I was going to proceed, but I feel like oh. it, yeah. it, it would be interesting to, to add that right now. Okay. So both fields were constructed in 2013 using an, an infield mix product called DuraEdge. This product is designed not to drain, and so it is pitched to, to allow the drainage to occur in pushing the water towards the grass surfaces. <coughs> it's appropriate for light grooming of this product. Uh, but unfortunately, more traditional heavy grooming was, was in place uh, early on in the life of the field. Based on the, this initial grooming and six years of use, it's time for these fields to be laser leveled, in some places rebuilt and, and, and edged, so that they are functioning as they, as they were designed. Uh, the main reason for this is that water is pooling. Fields, um, and, and this was a confusing thing for me <coughs> in the year, one to year two. Fields develop personalities where you can predict where they will puddle. And uh, we dug a lot deeper into what was going on, on especially the, the baseball diamond this past year because where they were puddling and where I was expecting to see puddles and it changed. And it, just, it just doesn't happen. So that's how we learned. We got the, the installer RED out and, and helped understand a little bit more about what was going on with, with both fields. So the, the water is pooling and, and what that causes is, is upwards of two and three days when we get significant rain that we can't play on the fields. They're just not draining appropriately. A properly level field um, would potentially allow for use of that field very shortly after uh, the rain has stopped. So in your packet, my letter references uh, some estimates that, that we put as plug numbers and also um, quotes that we have received for, for work. The, the number for both the baseball um, and softball field to be laser leveled uh, is a quote from RAD and we would certainly be looking for other quotes for the work to ensure responsible spending of the dollars, but that number is just under $28,000. 
One other comment to add here, our current groundskeeper, Scott Trefethen, has been trained on how to appropriately care for door edge fields so that once this work is complete, uh, that we are appropriately grooming and caring for the fields. The next area that I'd like to address with you is dugouts at both fields. Uh, this year, our state association across the board established that we would be operating under national federation high school rules. Now, you would think we were doing that all along. I'm letting you know we're not. Um, and periodically through this year, the state association has the ability to amend those rules with certain implications th that come with, fed with the federation. Some they're more willing to consider. Others they're not as willing to consider. Baseball they have pretty much accepted as is. And what this does, uh, the main impact for baseball is that everybody that is not act actually participating in the contest must be in the dugout. Um, as they're currently constructed and with the roster size that we typically keep, at a minimum we're going to have to look at expanding the footprint of those dugouts. Um, now, in the event that some of you might find yourself watching a baseball game, I want to let you know that as these rules are being, uh, are, are new to the baseball umpires who've been around and softball umpires who've been around for a while, you will find that Coach Niles probably has some relationships with some of these umpires and so they won't force him into the dugout. But over time here, this is what's going to happen and you'll, especially the younger uh, or less experienced uh, umpires will be following the, that letter of the law. Um, bless. So we will need to, to go out. So with the, the, the expansion of the footprint, I would like to explore, and we would need to go out and see quotes for design uh, and construction, of creating an enclosure for the dugouts. Uh, it would be a semi-enclosed space, theoretically a, a four by six construction that would support a, uh, a roof structure. Uh, the, the idea initially right now would be to, to create a privacy screen by using windscreen during the season and then take that down so that it was uh, a semi-enclosed structure. This would be tremendously helpful for us in the spring in dealing with safety plans with, with thunder and lightning. Uh, right now, there, there's, there's quite a distance, especially for softball to travel to get <coughs> to safe uh, cover when one of these storms pops up. Um, so we've used a plug number of $10,000 per dugout with four total dugouts uh, being needed for the two fields. And then the last improvement uh, that I'd like to talk to you about is to replace the baseball field's temporary fence. Uh, this fence is temporary because in the fall we're using that space for freshman and JV field hockey practice and freshman field hockey games. Um, the current fence is in, in disrepair uh, despite considerable efforts by Scott. It doesn't contain the batted ball in a predictable way that we can um, help the student athletes with on, on, on either side uh, of the contest. And, and quite honestly, it looks terrible. I mean, when you look at it from Union Street, the way it's, it, it drives me nuts all, all spring. We just cannot get it to function the way that it would have upon installation. Um, so I'm in the process of evaluating several fence options to ensure that we are not simply replacing one problem with another. Um, the current quotes would place this cost between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars. The fence system at the softball field is functioning much better. Um, so I'm not proposing that we replace that fence. We would be able to use the retired baseball fence to help extend the life of the of the softball fence. So the, the materials that are still in good shape would be able to be helpful. Uh, and with that, though I will be available for questions, uh, I would turn it over to, to Mr. Ferris to talk about uh, potential funding sources for the, the projects. Um, thanks, Jim. Um, so in your packets, you have, so back when we did the fields project, um, we actually had a fund established to collect the gifts that were given by um, 
uh, community members uh, in order to um, uh, work that um, public-private partnership. Okay, so um, you know, with that, with those donations, I mean, the donations we were looking for 1.1 million. They came in higher than that, and when the and, and when we got successive donations after the fact too, we had set up a special account, which was the High, Hingham High School um, Fields Project account. Okay, for the, the additional gift money, and we set that account back up in May of 2011. In your packet, you do have the um, the, the notice of you know how the account is actually running. So today, <coughs> um, in that account, there was um, actually at the beginning of the year there was one hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred ninety-eight thousand uh, one hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars, and we did fund the um, scoreboard for the softball field out of that of um, seventeen thousand seven hundred ten dollars. So right now there's a balance of one hundred forty-three five eighty-eight, and and if I were to read the fund, so the purpose of the fund was really to, to receive donations by any interested party, public or private, or individual for the purpose of rebuilding, repairing, enhancing, maint or maintaining the Hingham High School fields located on Union Street in Hingham. So specifically, the, the money was set up specifically for that field. Um, you know, when you look at the, the requests uh, now to enhance the field with the dugouts, to, you know, provide the maintenance for the, um, for the, for the um, infield, and you know to uh, look at the uh, replacing the fence and two, it all fits within that definition. Um, and you know, and, and it is sizable and it's a beautiful complex too. And if it's not working the way it's intended, I, I think that we you know we should undertake to have this field repaired and to use this um, this fund for it. This gives the uh, the school committee the ability to use this money without any further appropriation. <coughs> um, and I think you know that that's. Um, to me, it seems like a very valid, um, um, re reasonable uh, explanation. You, you think of the, the fields not only used by the Hingham High School, but it's also used by the community as well. I mean, you, you see that puddling and stuff, and I you know, haven't been a Babe Ruth coach. I'm guilty of taking a rake and <coughs> moving water off and digging up and, and stuff as well. So, you know, over the years, sometimes these fields will get out of shape. Um, but you know, with Scott being trained and we have proper equipment, you know, hopefully, I don't know if we'd expect one of these every six years or whether, you know, we'd have minor maintenance every year for smaller dollars. But um, to me, it makes sense. And I think that, uh, you know, we do have a funding source for it. There's $143,000. Okay. Thank you. Questions from the committee? of the outfield so then impacts the field hockey field as well the pooling that I'm talking about is in the infield only on the infield okay only. There's, there's some different drainage issues out there in the in the in the field hockey area but they would not be addressed with this repair do we want to address them at the same time I think there's a, a different uh, project that would not necessarily be able to be funded even with the balance of what's in that in that account so I field would love to, answer, yeah, the I'd love to answer yes. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, all right. It's Jim, not the answer I wanted yeah. to hear, but. <laughs> Jim, to Lisa's question, is, is there a problem with the outfield, the grass, in the varsity softball and the varsity baseball? Not as I no. see it currently. No. You're, you're talking about the outfield a little bit the further. Baseball. So it would be past the fence? Yes. Oh. All right. John. Well, we should. I'm sorry. It, it, that it doesn't, it, we should have it on a capital plan or something just so we shouldn't ignore the field hockey field too. Is it the Here field I hockey saying, we're talking about the second softball? It's, it's more, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I might, it, it might be better to, sit, to say that it's not the field hockey field and more the second softball, the JV softball okay. field and the right. outfield there. Okay. And, and we do have a price for that, Liz. I mean, you know, we, we've got estimates for that, so. Um, it's a big number, yeah. so clearly it would be on the master plan for sure. Okay. Uh, I haven't put it on a five-year capital plan yet. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I really could. I mean, because it's probably between you know about three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars, 
you know, as um, you know, I did put the capital plan. At some point, we'll probably have to redo those tennis courts too. So yep. all of that, I'm thinking more along the lines of master plan for those. I things. just I asked because I know the field hockey field is very close to the baseball outfield and yeah. make. And I've heard of drainage issues in general on the yeah. baseball field. So just want to make sure we were covering everything that. So okay. Thank you. What uh, but what the coach is talking about are the infields of the two varsity fields. Uh, if any of my fellow members would like to see photographs of what it looks like after it's been groomed with water on them, I happen to have pictures of both fields. And uh, as Coach describes very adequately, uh, there were times that the field was groomed and it just plain flat didn't drain, and games had to be canceled on, bo on both uh, both uh, both fields. Hmm. I would love to have seen here also as, as part of a, a project. Uh, something that uh, Dr. Schreier, myself, and uh, Ness uh, discussed with the neighbors um, of um, of the girls' softball field, the netting. Right. So you know, because that is pending, right? Yeah. We did we did promise them that we would address that, put a net in there to s avoid the, the balls from falling into the backyard or breaking the windows. So if you could include something like that well, here. I Sorry, but I thought we were going to ask the boosters to contribute to that. Well, thank you. Okay. We can we can speak about that Let's as well. Why don't we keep that separate from right. this? Yes. But please address that for me next time. It's, it's, it's sure. I mean, the, I'm happy to, if the committee wanted to approve that as well. I mean, it's up. You know, it's we can we, it. we were looking at this proposal for. We can leave it for the next time. We could we could certainly fine. put that on a subsequent agenda. I think. All right. Any other? Questions on this? Uh, wholeheartedly, uh, wholeheheartedly endorse it. Yeah. Libby, do you have a question? Sorry. <coughs> no. All right. Did you want? A motion has been made. Did you want to speak? No. Ray, would you like to speak? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want? Uh, no, this is all right. Uh, Ray Estes, 92 Fort Hill Street. Um, I think I'm speaking on behalf of Hingham Sports Partnership this evening. Um, so I appreciate you considering this. Um, it's obviously very much needed. It's unfortunate that the, the maintenance early on after the field was put into service um, was not appropriate so that really some damage was done. Um, and then over the last few years, it's just gotten worse. Um, now that we have, um, you know, someone who's, who's, uh, you know, been properly trained um, with how to groom it, and we get it fixed, um, you know, up to the right, uh, you know, the right grading and, and consistency. I think I think both fields will perform much better. Um, I would say, with respect to the the fund that we're talking about, um, you know, you suggest netting, you know. So I've met with with Bruce Zaro and Lynn Stafford as well. Um, I know that they have concerns about the proximity of that field. Um, you know, certainly we put up netting at the middle school to protect the building from softballs uh, close in proximity to that. Um, I would suggest that things like netting, um, which are, you know, for safety reasons for the neighbors um, and other things, you know, I would encourage uh, Mr. Quattrimoni to examine this project as it was constructed and as it's been put into service over the last six years and take a look at and, and see if there are other things that need to be done that perhaps weren't done at the time. Um, you know, he spoke about dugouts. Those were originally discussed as part of this project and, and were, were cut and were not included <coughs> as were batting cages and foul poles and many of those things have been added in subsequent years, as you know, by private donations. The fund that we're discussing tonight is private donations. A lot of it actually I think is probably attributable, attributable to HSP dollars that came in over time um, after the project was finished in 2014. I'm sure there's other donations from other individuals in town as well that contributed to, to the money that came in post-2014. So I, I would suggest and encourage that you take a look at attributes of that project that six years um, hence maybe could use some additional maintenance or could use some um, 
some additional care or perhaps some things that were not uh, able to be purchased at the time because of the tight budget and now that you have residual donated funds that aren't budget dollars that should take a hard look and see there's no reason why that should be sitting there this money's been sitting there for almost five years and I think that there are appropriate things that it could be spent on and those that was what it was intended for by those who donated it um, so netting is a great idea I w would recommend you take a look at that and any anything else that that coach um, and his and his uh, staff um, perhaps identifies um, as being necessary to make sure that those fields are kept in the best possible maintained shape and to the extent that there are attributes that could be further improved or um, or or, or uh, or things added to them that weren't able to be purchased previously that they they be done so now um, because I, I really think it's important that we we maintain the quality of that asset that we've spent so much money on thank you thank you, thank you, Ray. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, we need to vote on this correct yes yes all right um, do somebody want to make a motion, motion has been made by oh. dr. Schreier dr. Schreier go ahead Sorry, I did not hear a motion. I just heard him say he was endorsing it. <laughs> sort of like <laughs> for the amount that we need. We haven't done bids on these yet. Um, no, but I, I would you know, go up to up doing to up to eighty-five or ninety thousand okay. dollars. Yeah, you know, and then authorize the superintendent to sign any contracts. So we'll to how much? I would do ninety. We'll do up to ninety. Yeah, go up to ninety thousand. Yeah, to ninety thousand. I would authorize. Um, our athletic director, subject to getting appropriate bids to be authorized to spend up to ninety thousand no, dollars. You can't. Sorry, hold on. I, I think you could, if you could authorize the superintendent to expend the expend funds up for the yeah, purpose idea. of, you know, repairing the. Um, the uh, baseball, baseball fields and building dugouts and softball field as appropriate or something to that but try to make it as general as possible mm -hmm. um, the intent of course is that we will invest the money in these areas but I don't think we have to be specific and uh, on saying each one we would put dugouts for the softball in the baseball field with laser level the the infield and um, you know and do the rebuilding of the edge and other necessary maintenance okay. I'm just looking. Uh, here we go uh, I would um, make a motion to authorize the uh, superintendent uh, to direct the athletic director to continue to get bids for laser le laser leveling of the varsity um, baseball diamond laser leveling of the varsity softball diamond a varsity baseball field portable fence and construction of appropriate size dugouts, four in number, for two for the varsity softball and two for the varsity baseball, and to f be funded up to $90,000. From the field, um, from that county, what is called the field? From the, from the um, Hingham High School Fields Project account. Very good. Hingham Thank you. High School Fields Project Thank account. You. Think authorized funding. Yeah, I think you we need to amend it a little bit yeah. because yeah. I think we need to amend the motion a little bit to authorize Fun. the superintendent to receive spend. bids and spend yeah. up to ninety thousand dollars on this after receiving yeah. appropriate bids. Because, yeah. okay, yeah. Does Sounds that work? Good to me. All right, Pam, do you have that the way you want? It? Do you want us? Would you mind repeating it? So um, it's, it's a motion to authorize the superintendent to. To get bids and spend up to ninety thousand dollars for repair and maintenance. Was there more than that? Though? To the softball and baseball fields. Um, you can cite the I think it's to complete laser leveling, um, per, uh, repair or replace the portable fence, and construct dugouts for both varsity softball and okay. baseball fields. Second. I'll second okay. that. Second that. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 On that, it's unanimous. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
for the folks who raised the money <laughs> that that was available for the fields project. So thank you for your presentation. All right. Um, yes. Um, all right, I'm going to move on to item agenda item 8, um, 48 hours. Dr. Janey already gave us one 48 hours. Does anyone? Yes. Thank you, Carrie. Um, does anyone else have any other 48 item? 48 hour items? No. Nope. All right. Um, subcommittee and project reports. I'll just start with Ness. Okay. I um, have an East update. We met on the 21st, 22nd of January to go over the results of the parent caregiver surveys. Uh, there's a focus group um, that are going to be meeting uh, two focus groups that are happening, one in the morning and one at night on the 26th to discuss the surveys. That's all I have. Thank you. So, um, I went to the South School Council meeting on January 29th and it is buzzing along nicely. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Uh, I was just looking up to see when the next meeting is. But I'm in the wrong year. February 26th. Thank you. Next one's February 26th. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated that they were talking about is um, introducing positive mindset caveat and um, talking, having a bulletin board that recognizes that hard work takes time and that mistakes help me learn and um, they're handing out awards that have little muscle brains on them that, oh it's like a brain that's going like this. So um, lots of good stuff going on at South School these days. <laughs> Feed and Mrs. Eastwood. And um, Hingham Education Foundation has a lot um, on its plate. Um, February 2nd they had a coffee and conversation at the Hingham Historical Society that Jamie and Dr. Jamie and uh, Katie went to and it helped people to learn about what's going on in the classrooms. Um, this month of February they are having a matching donation campaign of $40,000. So any donations that are made now will be matched up to the amount of $40,000. The spring annual uh, event is April 3rd, so put that on your calendar. It's going to be at Paragon Park and it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, they are already looking ahead to next year, filling the board, and are um, recruiting a graphic designer, a website manager, and a treasurer to act as an assistant to the treasurer to learn the ropes. So if you're interested in joining a board um, in town, I highly recommend Hingham Education Foundation. Um, did you want to, as part of community outreach, did you want to mention that we're working on the FAQs for foster and yes. encourage people to attend PTO meetings? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> community outreach. Um, right, so community outreach is working on a uh, frequently asked question um, bulletin regarding foster school and all of the next steps that are going to come with that and um, help people realize just how long and drawn out this process is and to be uh, cognizant of the decisions that are going to need to be made down the road. Um, we've, have you handed it to Ray Estes? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Ray Estes is at the moment looking at it and adding pertinent information. Yeah, I think I said about two. Oh, I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay. Um, so we'll bring that to hopefully to the next meeting for a read. Yep. Okay. And then um, also <coughs> I want to encourage uh, everybody on the school committee to attend PTO meetings so for their schools to which they are the liaison um, <coughs> to give people updates on the budget process and um, give an understanding of how they can participate in that. 
we venue. should schedule those then yes with the PTOs yes um, so yes if folks can reach out to their PTOs and schedule mm -hmm. getting on their agendas to speak um, about the budget and sorry and then Jamie I just think you have reach um, yeah. give the committee an update that we have just um, received uh, made a decision last week uh, to proceed with Sterling Brandworks uh, as the vendor oh. for our complete redesign of our and relaunch of our website. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've just received a contract on Friday um, and it's currently being reviewed by both Paul and John to ensure it has all the appropriate components and that it sort of covers everything it needs to cover. Um, but I have spoken um, to Thomas Sterling uh, both after our, our, our group met on Monday and, and made our decision final um, around some lingering questions we had. All of those questions have been satisfactorily satisfied and we have um, uh, formally received a contract to begin the work uh, to re, re overhaul the website. So I just wanted to update the committee, particularly this community this outreach that I know Libby, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, Libby and Paul joined us for our vendor presentations to hear a little bit about what the different yeah. companies were proposing well, and so great. our committee has reached a decision and we are moving forward with Sterling Brainworks. Some of you may remember Sterling mm -hmm. uh, who had worked with us for the discovery phase of, the, of this work a couple years ago um, and we decided to, to, because they understood us so well and sort of had the best um, materials and sort of proposal uh, to move forward with uh, Sterling. So that is just waiting uh, for the signature and we're off and running. Awesome. Thank Jamie, you. Were, yeah, there, were there districts that they did that you liked the yes, platforms? They, we did. Can you tell yes. us which towns so we can just Yes, um, I might need to get, take a sec just to look it up <laughs> while I look, but yeah. that we, they did give us a whole list of um, uh, and actually use illustrative examples in their presentation of different websites and different components of them. And I'll just uh, take me a minute. Okay. I don't want to misspeak. Okay. They are wor working on Lexington right now, where they're about to work potentially with Ashland. As a and, but they gave us final ones that I want to make sure I give you the right town. So just give me okay. one second and I will look. Do you want to give any updates, Liza? So while Jamie looks that up. Or I'm sorry. Two dates for community outreach that I should point out. Um, Oh, yes. Thank We've you. got two coffees with the super um, scheduled, and one is with the um, Senior Center, and one is at Linden Ponds. And um, help me. <laughs> February 12th is one of them. So, February 12th, that's the Senior Center, right? Um, that's the Senior Center. That's the Senior Center. Yeah, first. February yep. 12th at the Senior Center at 9 30. And Linden Ponds is um, uh, March 2nd at um, 7, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. yes, so thank you. You're on. We're ready. Okay. All right. Liza. Okay. Um, today was the Foster School PTO meeting that unfortunately I was not able to attend, but they did. So I'll catch them for their next one. Um, and um, for the master plan committee, our next meeting is February 12th, and we are going to have a discussion about facilities. So I will be sure to bring share our issues with them. Thank you. Um, and then we have another master plan meeting um, on February 26th as well. Um, so I will report on the 24th of what happened at the 12th. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then for salary negotiations, we have our next negotiations with the HEA Unit A with the teachers on Monday, February 10th. Um, so, great. Thank you. That's about it. All right. Dr. Ed? Nothing tonight. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Carrie? Okay, so policy, um, we discussed the Narcan um, med medicine um, policy earlier. In addition to that, we appointed the executive assistant to the superintendent as the MASC policy project liaison um, and document all the documents that they requested have been submitted to MASC, so that's moving along. Um, we also discussed the foreign exchange policy, um, and it was sort of, sort of triggered by um, the French exchange program that came before us earlier, and as well as a request from uh, Hingham family to host a foreign national exchange. Um, uh, national family member. Um, Vice President Henriksen attended the meeting and um, spoke in support of keeping the formal exchange pro program requirement that's currently in our policy. Um, and she discussed the advantages of having a formal program, which includes support and resources for students, schools, and the host families. Um, it was kind of, it was part of the discussion, is it was noted that Hingham High School has not hosted very many foreign exchange students in recent years, and it would be advantageous to encourage some more participation in those programs. 
Okay. Um, so in the end, the committee agreed to just table the discussion of any kind of change to the policy, and we'll as as we go through all the policies with MASC, we'll we'll reach it then, so we can deal with it then. Um, and then the the short term exchange program, such as the um, the one with the French program, that'll be covered w under our field trip policies that are there now. So. Okay. Um, and then for Hingham Middle School, the school council met on January 21st. Uh, Vice Principal Reardon and Officer Ramsey gave an overview of the overall school safety and security plan and the description of the contingencies that are practiced by students and staff. Uh, we also went over the parent transition survey results um, and based on the results, the administration is looking into doing a technology survey for parents of income, um, in incoming sixth graders. Um, people want to know more about technology. Um, they're also looking for to find ways to get the word out that parents are welcome to schedule teacher conferences I even though it's different in elementary <coughs> school they have the designated conference days that's not really the case in middle school so we're going to try to get the word out that you can contact your child's teachers if they if you want to talk to them about something um, and they're looking at ways to consolidate school supply lists um, and uh, there was some feedback about after school activities and taking a look at that and to see if we're offering the things that students want to participate in it um, we also went over a draft of the general school survey that was went out, I think, Friday the 24th. Um, I also went to the South PTO meeting um, in Libby's place. It was a great meeting. Dr. Austin was there. Um, they had a successful Winterfest and mini grants. They um, awarded 12 grants to reaching all grades. Um, for their read everyone's doing the read across America week. <coughs> They're going to have a surprise guest, so we should keep out. They didn't tell us who it was, so <laughs> it's a secret. So um, keep an eye out. Uh, the social is March 14th at the community center, uh, and we talked about the uh, kindergarten enrollment period is coming up, and we just wanted to thank South for uh, they always put it on their sandwich board, which is right on Main Street. So that re reminds parents all across town <laughs> that they need to get their packets back in. So that's thank you to South for that. Um, and then for SNAP, the spring programs will be on the website, it's slowstarsnap.com, and then Pizza Palooza is coming up on March 25th, so save the date. Mm -hmm. So just to awesome. circle back to Liza, yes, um, we have, they redesigned the Mass Association of School Superintendents website, the Weston Public Schools, the Tewksbury Public Schools, uh, the Malden Public Schools, the Danvers Public Schools, the North Shore Educational Consortium, Triton Regional, and Swampscott. As done and completed. There's other yes. projects they have ongoing, but those are the, the, if you wanted to go and navigate any of those towns, um, you'll be able to see sort of their work in action. I've seen Matt, MASS, and Weston recently. Mm. Yeah, they're good. Um, speaking of the sandwich boards, it just dawned on me. <coughs> Can we add to, is Tony still here? Oh. Can we add a sign on the East School? sign that's out on 228 like at the bottom of that pole to it's like if you think about it, like foster has their sandwich board out which that hits a lot of crow point east school if we add it to that sign that would hit a lot of that 228 mm -hmm. traffic and even plymouth river if we added right something to the street. sign on high street are we allowed to do that like at the base that's of the sign pole the only thing i know when that sign first went in we first opened you have to look at the records, I think. We got permission to put that sign because it's not school property. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, where the sign technically is, I think, is town property, and uh, the, the person's yard's right there. Yeah. So certainly we can see if we can make space, but nothing out there really belongs to us. So we'd have to figure out how to make that happen. Uh, there are sign rules in town, so. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, just a thought of, because yeah. that's effective of having, like, <clears throat> The kindergarten registration and other notices right. that are more visible. Um, but, yeah. right. If I can just add, when you were just talking about kindergarten registration, I'm actually hosting the uh, all the area preschools tomorrow. Oh, and excellent! Offer coffee and conversation with them about the uh, new policy and registration process. So. Um, I hope to have lots here tomorrow. I suspect we will. Good. Good. Yes, thanks for doing that. Thank you. Carlos? Okay. Long range planning. Matt with Copper Outlay on the 22nd. Thank you, Dr. Shreya, Nass, John, and Joe Andros. Uh, it was great. We present them with our Copper Needs budget um, of 2.2 
million dollars, we hope to get 2.3. Exactly. <laughs> Which is day of our budget is $2.4 million. So Their we've overall, been a little aggressive here. Their total budget was $2.4 million? That, something like that, right, John? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. So anyhow... You know um, what was asked in total? No, no, I don't know. We asked in I'll total. No, I mean no. not us. In total, no, what were the asks? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So we've just been a little aggressive <coughs> here, <coughs> understanding that our principals and directors <coughs> need some improvement in you know, on your schools. So, um, and that's that. Um, let's hope that we hear, uh, you know, from them, and, you know, the great number. Um, high school council met on my computer just closed. On January 8th, they had a, you know, a live discussion. Um, it's amazing how much they cover in 1.15 uh, minutes. And now in 15 minutes, it's, it's really like a great, great meeting. Uh, they had a discussion on, um, you know, the survey, the, the, the participants there, and they asked what the, you know, current dis distribution requirements should be done. Um, and uh, they also went over um, what would you change if you could. Uh, individuals answered, there was a, a live discussion on actually uh, and being more flexible in meeting the PE requirements. Um, some of the you know, students present even um, said that you know, reducing math requirements would be great, adding more civic requirements, uh, spend language offering, and uh, allowing, again, um, great flexibilities in, in, in meeting the language requirement and increasing the emphasis on financial literacy. Um, so there was a lot of discussion there. Um, I have a copy of the minutes. As a matter of fact, I want to share with you so you, you follow what's going on at the, uh, at the student council. Uh, I could be here for half an hour or more. Um, so I'll share that with you. Uh, but they're doing a great job there. And they continue uh, pursuing the discussion on uh, the ad advisory uh, for the you know, uh, freshmen. freshmen right so yeah. um, that's that. Uh, the next meeting is on February 5th. If anyone wants to attend, it's 5 o'clock right at the high school. Okay. Um, and you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, we're doing a presentation with the advisory about selectmen mm -hmm. on, on the budget, mm -hmm. bring someone from MASC or, you know. Yep. I think we should do that now rather than later, mm -hmm. since we're talking about the budget season. If you want me to look into uh, bringing someone, because we had someone offering Jason Frazier. I already, yeah. You did? Uh, yes, I've already, yes. Good. And he's agreed to come in. It's just a matter of setting up a date. Awesome. For, because for everybody. Yeah, because right now we're ta talking about, you know, the student opportunity, uh, you know, the funds, fundings, the new fundings. Yes. It would, it would be perfect. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a tough time of year. <laughs> Unfortunately, that yeah. I mean, and in an ironic way, it's just tough because it's budget it season, yeah. so we'd like to have more time to talk about budgets. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're trying to um, get some dates together. Um, is that it? That's all. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple things. Um, actually, Ness and I met with John the other day to, uh, to go over sort of the METCO budget and transportation stuff for next year. So thank you for your time and doing that. It was really um, informative. Um, just We were sort of just talking, finding out, but wanted to hear more about the transportation um, for next year. Just you know, in an effort to potentially increase the METCO students that we can accept into the district, um, if there's room for that. Um, and then also, I don't think that we have talked about this, maybe we have, but it's coming up soon. On March 12th, I believe, Mr. Joy um, is a, so Hingham was selected as one of the towns by Arts Emerson to um, uh, to perform a one, I believe it's a one woman show called Mr. Joy here in Hingham. And I don't remember if it's at the high school or at the middle school. High school? It's at the high school. And it's... I think it's later in the month. I thought it was March 12th for some... But... Sorry. Tanya? Um, yeah, it's a very... It's a really great show. A few... Um, the, the Metco <laughs> had put out a... Um, I think it was back in the early fall, had put out a request that they were accepting grants um, for any schools that wanted to bring the program in. Um, and if you go on... 
the Arts Emerson website. It is there. Last year's performances are on there. So they go, it's a show that goes to um, high schools around the state. And um, it's a performance about race. And um, it's really, really a wonder, a really terrific show. So we want to really publicize that. We want to get big crowds there. Um, I'm actually hoping to talk with HSP and HEF about helping us publicize it because they did such a great job getting the word out for um, Wounded by War presentation last week. So, um, so yeah, so I want to try to get. I think it's to, during the day for students and then one in the evening as well. March 12th. March 12th, okay. Half the school will see it during the school <coughs> on Thursday, March 12th. The other half will see it the next day. Since we can really fit half the oh. student body in the auditorium at one time, so it requires two uh, performances. Yep. And uh, <coughs> the performance that's free and open to the public is on Thursday night. Thursday night. At 7 o'clock. Perfect. All right. So, we, so hopefully we'll be seeing more about that, if everyone can mark their calendars for that. Um, now than that, that is all I have. So with that, I would take, oh, John? Just one thing, uh, just to update on the Libby Industrial Park area. Oh, so yes, we're working out the final details there. I sent over a, a sort of a marked up version of their lease, so I haven't okay. got the feedback on them. But um, working with the building department, um, it, they, you know, we, we have a temporary permit for um, using the space for um, educational purposes because mm -hmm. it was uh, essentially commercial space so we needed that temporary permit and when you know one of the restrictions mm -hmm. that will uh, they, they don't want cars parking there so all kids will have to take a bus um, you know the, and, and then they'll go back to the high school uh, at the end of the day and um, so hopefully we will be have everything sort of wrapped up within the next week or so and then get Great. the equipment moved over and get them operational in a new space Excellent. That's great. Thank All you. Right, and this will be short term, just going to June, um, and then we'll vacate at the end of June. So we'll have uh, the expense of getting there and the expense of getting back. But, mm -hmm. you know, get them um, up and running for the rest of the year, anyways. Well, robotics? Okay. Robotics will not be in this space, right? Um, there was a request to build some rooms, but we're not going to build rooms in this. You know, this is just here's temporary space. Let's get the. Uh, you know, allow the kids to do their workshops and um, woodworking, and you know, the June will be here before we know it. You know, it's like, and then we'll be vacating. Okay. But robotics is fine at the high school, from what we've heard. You know, their space is sufficient at the high school. Is your sense that robotics will be fine at the high school next year? Um, we're hopeful that we're going to get a solution for next year. Yes. I will say that uh, in that in that realm, if you don't mind, I did yeah. visit a, a location today with Tom Mayo that we're still we're talking about it, looking into heavily, and so I'm I'm enthusiastic that that will be solved very soon and and move forward. Yes, I was going to say that hope is not a strategy, so we will have a space for the traces in September. We're working on it. We're there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Already full plate. I, we, I personally, I really appreciate it. Um, we need to. It's a special group of kids, and I yeah. hope that of all of us making this effort, will show the whole community that we really do value every child in the in the district. So, uh, and we're making the effort. So, thank you. With that I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Lies. All right. Second. Carrie. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.